So he took off his shirt and we literally see these three red scratches just start to form. It literally looks like a claw. Not to be a pessimist, but it's definitely all within our best benefit to believe that there's an afterlife, right? That experience, call it a dream, call it what you will, it was so real to me. In that moment, I knew that I had a soul. My they basically invented a That's ghost and the ghosts, the paranormal activities started to happen inside of that home. Stop believing I don't want ghosts in my house. You wouldn't appreciate things if you didn't know how bad they could be either. If all we knew mm -hmm. was heaven and everything was good, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't care. Dude, something's in there and he goes, I'm here. I'll go, whoa, what the fuck I said. And he goes, shadow man. Warning, may contain ghost stories, paranormal activity, black energy, Vatican theories, and or peanuts. I am, I am Woodstock. So you guys met in the military. Is the MP for military police? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we're okay. Air Force Security up, Forces. Yeah. There's a funny story whenever you're, you you want to hear it. Well, that's right it. now. Okay. Let's speak on. So, um... 2017, I was at a um, place in Oklahoma City. I was stationed at Tinker Air Force Base for mm -hmm. five years. And uh, I'd always wanted to make like a YouTube channel and do paranormal investigations. It's been something I've wanted to do my whole life, right? So I asked a couple of buddies to come out to this place called Concho Native American School, which is like this, um, call it a denatifying, like make native people white type school. They did school. back like 70s, yeah. 80s, yeah. Uh, a little earlier than that, okay. maybe like the 50s, 60s. So not so nice stuff. Yeah, not nice stuff. Anyway, yeah. uh, we get there, and uh, I'm thinking we could just like walk into the place because it's on like a native reservation, the Cheyenne Arapaho Reservation in Oklahoma City, and it just didn't look like anybody was around. So we go over there, and then we see the Cheyenne Arapaho police pull up, and we're like, "Gosh, oh, by the way, what's the policy on profanity?" Here? You're allowed to. Okay, Feel, just Hooray. be yourself. Okay, uh, I was like, "Oh shit." Uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> just get the, it out of the yeah, way right here's now. The, uh, so, anyways, they're like, "Dude, what are you?" Yeah, right there, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so they, they pull up and they're like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, oh, we're shooting a YouTube video, which we were not. We were just checking the place out, right? And he goes, oh, that's cool, man. He goes, uh, he goes, you know, we got to know each other, right? And I told him I was Air Force. And oh, he's like, oh, cool. I'm Ended up being a super nice guy, right? He's like, what's your YouTube channel? And I was like, MP Paranormal, right? <laughs> because, you know, we were military police, uh, you know, while we were in. So he's like, oh, cool. I can't wait to see the video. And, uh. So I had to make a video out like, of what oh, no, I was I filming. Can't make a liar of myself. I better start a YouTube channel. Exactly, <laughs> and that's where it was born uh, many that's years cool. ago. Mm -hmm. Well, it's crazy. I used to live in Brigham City, Utah. They also had an Indian school up there, and um, that's where I get the '70s and '80s. I think maybe it was a later one. It was terrifying. Like we'd take girls, like groups of people, like ten of us. We'd all like sneak into this little side thing. They're all boarded up, and there's this one building that was enormous. And so you start walking in. And there's just like bat shit all over the floor. And then you get deeper in. And I don't know if it was just like kids messing around or if we actually had, you know, Satan worshipers, but all over the wall, like red paint, like upside down. What are they called? Pento, pentagrams? Pentalphas, yeah. Pentalphas. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was terrifying. Um, the stuff that happened there, if, you know, again, I'm, I'm a little bit of a skeptic, but that's the place where stuff's going to go down is where there's just immense amounts of suffering and i'm kind of excited to because i watched fewer videos and thank you i have to admit like some of them are pretty convincing i uh <laughs> well, i'm thanks. like well yeah, that's good feedback for us <laughs> yeah. not, i'm like what is he gonna say what is he gonna say okay. i mean uh <laughs> no like i and i'll just say this and i like my wife she's a she, she believes in it all, you know, but she's also Latina and she thinks if you, you know, rub your belly and sing a little Crack song. Crack an egg that, over yeah, your head. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I believe that our willpower has a lot of power. So whether it's like religious, you're giving blessings, or they're miracles or paranormal, I'm never going to discount it as completely false because there are things that just are so unexplainable in this world. Yeah. I attribute it to it, like we manifest it so if if you believe like that that show uh what is it skeleton key i don't know if you've seen that one no is it skeleton key it's the one with um goldie hahn's daughter but mm. the whole premise is it magic doesn't work unless you believe in it that's um magic mm. religion yeah. um belief in yourself 
you know it's uh it doesn't it's not gonna happen if you don't believe in yourself right yeah Amen. you're not gonna accomplish something so it's really just the concept that can kind of apply to anything in life and it's an interesting because pers- a lot of people like in individuals like yourself who are like kind of on the fence of you know maybe i believe maybe i don't or i don't believe right so when people say like exactly what you said that the willpower and the intention of the individual is what causes these things to be real and happen and be true or at least in retrospect to like their pers- you know re- reality as i think is a part of it that like a lot of people like discredit with the paranormal is because you're like making it up as you go in your own mind like you're creating your own reality which is actually quite interesting because there's a thing called the philip experiment i don't know if you ever heard of it before no, what's that it's a, it's a metaphysical experiment that did like back in the 70s <coughs> or 80s or could be even more recent i'm not the best guy with dates so excuse me um i know she's looking it up right now uh, i don't know what year yeah, it was she's on top 72, 72 there we go parapsychology yeah and uh, basically they created a poltergeist or like a paranormal entity based off of their projections of thought into this thing and they called it philip and uh, they started to document that things were like happening in like real real time so they named the entity philip philip yeah that's my basically invented a ghost and the ghosts the paranormal activities started to happen inside of the home or wherever they were conducting the the experiment the lab um and it's, but, it's like objective data that they're collecting, like they're according actually to them. viewing it. Wow. Uh, according to the experiment. I mean, yeah. obviously experiments can be skewed, Yeah, you know, depending. Even quote unquote scientific experiments, they found that your intention going into it truly does matter. Yeah, so if you want to believe in the ghost, then the ghost is probably real because you already decided that. And that's why I keep yelling at my wife, stop believing. I don't want ghosts in my house. So, But it, it, to the point that I was going to bring up is that that is true like you do make it happen for yourself but you also don't make it happen for yourself at the same time meaning that there are real spirits and real entities and forces beyond our understanding but there's also things that we project and create into the environment at the same time so both sides are correct if that makes sense i love it y'all have the ability to go out there with cameras with audio equipment um, I'm assuming you may have other equipment. We can get into that. But the reason I respect what y'all do is it's not you're just telling stories of what you saw. You're sharing that actual information with everyone. So whether you're a skeptic or not, um, at least you're backing it up with some actual data that people can you know, see for themselves. And at the end of the day, whether it's all true or all fake or maybe and most likely a little bit in between, mm-hmm. it's Pretty entertaining stuff, man. You, you have great posts, like very good audio, uh, great uh, setup and uh, intros. Like, well Thanks, done. Chase. Yeah, we've. Got, <laughs> I feel like we've come a long way since our first video about two years ago. Like the recent, like uh, we just uploaded this one, the Hill House, and then this is the most recent one that we uploaded yesterday. Was the uh, Old Town, Old Times. Um, but yeah, it's so funny to look back. Me and Brian look back, it's and we just cr- painful to look Yeah, back. we we cringe. We're just like, oh my god, this was so bad back in the day, yeah. but we're so much better now in well, our you should listen to some of my first episodes we'll we'll definitely uh feel that same way yeah but we uh we are ex- i i'm excited about this because i've been in texas for probably more than any other place i've ever lived and so actually having been to multiple of these places i'm gonna i looked at the columbus one which was legit i gotta check out yorktown because i've spent quite a bit of time there too so what um when you started this all up, I'm, I'm assuming you're doing a lot of Texas just because that's what you're close to, or is it specifically Texas themed? Yeah, we're you know geographically located here, and there's no shortage of places that are haunted. Either they're well known, or we're uncovering them, and uh, we really haven't found a need to uh, go out of the state just yet. I mean, there's so much ground to cover. So much. Eventually, we'll run out of content when we've hit the entire state, right? But yeah. that time has not come yet. Yeah, but that's like the size of Germany plus, right? Yeah, like, it'll yeah. take some time. And a lot of people don't realize, is, is like, oh, why is Texas so haunted? I mean, it was literally the most violent state in the Union ever to exist. Um, there was multiple cities to include Columbus that didn't get their reincorporation into the Union because they lost it, and the Texas Rangers had to go like bring back order, and they didn't get back into the Union until like 1920 or 1919 or something like that. Like I said, dates, fact check me, but it was a very not long ago that they were allowed back in because of how bloody uh, some of these towns that were in Texas. The, uh, they called them the American Indian Wars and just uh, replacing and slaughtering. 
Native Americans. Yeah, um, just blood feuds, the pure hatred. Like, oh yeah, my pure hatred wife, among American citizens, whether they were you know liberal or conservative, or they were trying to elect some sheriff in town. I mean, every single town has this crazy story where there was a shootout and fifteen people got slaughtered in the street, and that was just <laughs> that was just like, well, it's time to go to church now. Like, whatever, let's it, press. And uh, Columbus was part of, uh, you know, a lot of these towns are part of the um, Santa Ana's war path, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Columbus is actually a town that existed uh, from what was called the runaway scrape. So basically, um, uh, what was his name? Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't Houston. Yeah, it was Sam Houston. Sam Houston was the Paul Revere of the Texas Revolution. So basically, he would ride from town to town, saying, "Instead of the British are coming, the Mexicans are coming." for real and they would empty out all the towns and they would burn them to the ground they would burn everything to the ground they would destroy everything and they would move on and that's how they defeated santa ana in houston is because they had no supplies by the time they got to starved them out exactly but columbus is one of those towns and any nothing there is uh uh older than whenever the runaway scrape was 18 you know 30 1840 something like that so how do you get your leads? Do you just search for stuff? Do people reach out to you? How do you pick the next place you're going? Gosh, they just kind of fall in their lap, in our lap. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy to answer that question because he gets a lot of these. I just, uh, yeah, talk to people and then do research, uh, do interviews, reach out to people. I'm um, really open to anything, you know. Uh, I would say businesses and restaurants, they're a little bit harder to convince just because, mm -hmm. you know, serve alcohol, they have cash registers, so there's a lot of a level of trust. Some people are just dead against it like absolutely not you're not going to be doing any necromantic things in my business you know what i mean <laughs> and other people are just like yeah whatever here are the keys like it's really interesting to like meet people and and pursue that and um right now we're kind of on the hunt for we're going to decide what our next location is so we've got a lot of backlogged content for now yep but uh we're going to see what falls in our laps we don't really worry about it too much it comes to us <laughs> Well, if you're listening to this and you have a place that's haunted, reach out. We'll uh, be able to pass it on. Um, my wife, actually, when they were growing up, there was a place that she, her whole entire family, they're just 100% convinced that it's haunted. There's no question. Every single person that was there, they all, like, experienced the same kind of, you know, whatever you call them, occurrences. Um, I've never really, I've never really had some. I've had a few times when I was a kid where, say, like, I'd look up on a hill, I was having a sleepover and we we're actually sleeping outside in a van for some reason, we were like 10 or something like that. We look out the window and up next to the school on the hill, we saw this like, it looked like a you know young girl in like a nightgown standing in front of like an old time school. And then I looked away and back and it was gone. I mentioned it to my friend and he's like, I saw the exact same thing, but I'm like, mm -hmm. did he just say that he saw that or did we actually see it? Why did we never see it before? So I don't know. I think our minds are pretty, uh, pretty powerful. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta take into consideration that two individual people saw the exact same thing because, um, like the place that we go to all the time, right? Or I've been to a bunch of times. Brian's have been to a bunch of times. The most haunted place that we've been, which is the Hill House, right, in Mineral Wells. Ooh, um, you're familiar with it. I've heard of, yeah. Okay, super notorious place, right? But, like, that's a common thing that people say about that place. It's like, oh, like, y'all are making things up or X, Y, and Z. But the really cool place thing about that is that it's one of very few places that you can go where people can have collective experiences that hear or see the exact same thing at the exact same time. Meaning that, like, there's no subjective influence from other people like everybody stops in their tracks and goes what the f was that at the yeah. same time because they all heard it or they all saw it you know what i mean yeah i guess one of the strangest ones you went to bed we were there for two nights we stayed there for <laughs> oh two you nights. stayed two nights yes we did that was our last video i've been there overnight by myself for 12 hours yeah, no way yeah it's did rough. you do a video of that one no but uh, 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 we can talk about it was it the collective that. experience right so we were staring you know into this we're upstairs and I asked the person next to me, I'm like, do you see that? And he's like, yes. I'm like, what do you see? I see a tall lady in a white gown and she's staring right at us. I'm like, I see her too. I asked our next guy, like, do you see him? He's like, what do you, whole, like, we all see it. And it's like consistently standing in the doorway and then she just like fades away. It's, and we're like watching this and I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it, how real this experience was. We're all sober, by the way. Nobody was under the influence of anything. We were caffeine. Yeah. And, you know, we were alert. I was asleep. Yeah, he was so tired. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push. You know, maybe something crazy will happen. This was at 5 a.m. by the way, and um, with a place like that, because it used to be a bordello and a brothel, and uh, a lot of people would get up and 
and leave you know they would stay there the night and they're like okay it's time to sneak away so like five or six in the morning is when strange activity happens in that house and you can't you can't fake something like there's no there's no smoke screen there's no led projector it's literally something that manifested in front of all three of us we all confirmed that we saw it in real time and we all said okay it's gone now what the heck was that the smoke and mirrors thing gets me all the time because that place is so haunted and people are like, yo, like they have uh, hydraulics behind the walls and they have speakers <laughs> and cameras. I was like, all right, so someone who's come from, and both of us coming from a military <laughs> police background and we all, we've both done security, right? We've operated multi-billion dollar security systems. We've seen what that looks like, right? And obviously, Kathy and Sonny Esses don't have multi-billion dollar security systems, but they don't even have multi-thousand dollar security systems, okay? People think that they'll go like in the backyard in their camper and make things happen. I'm like, first, and foremost i was like do you understand the amount of communications and information technology equipment and you know buttons and switches and all those things and panels and monitors that go into an operation like that it would be ridiculous i mean a console that was at like tinker right on our uh flight line i'm not going to go into detail obviously but it was like from the ground it was like this tall it was like five and a half feet tall and like 12 and a half feet wide monitors you know buttons all sorts of stuff like that like that's what it takes just to cover like you know uh six football fields worth of sensors and stuff like that right just to give you an idea so if you're like gonna have multiple camera points and and sensors and switches and buttons and all these things are you gonna fit that in an rv in the back of your in your backyard and you're gonna monitor it 24 7 and you're gonna make sure everything's cohesive and coherent and everything tracks 100 percent of the time yeah no not not happening it's 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 illogical but i think that the activity is so intense and so real that people have to default to it being fake for it to track in their mind or else it really people feel more comfortable is like you look back on an experience you're like that didn't happen Mm. you know or like that that couldn't realistically and logically speaking that was impossible so it has to be fake because there is no explanation but that is what the paranormal is it's something that we don't understand and i'm okay with that I don't have the answer. Neither of us have the answer. Like we've figured out the secret of the afterlife. Uh, it's meant to be mysterious and we're meant to be guessing until it's our turn to enter into that afterlife ourselves. And that's just the way I approach life. Otherwise you'd probably go crazy trying to wrap your head around these things. So obviously no one knows. Do y'all have a like pretty specific belief on what these are there? Do you think they're actual like people's spirits that have, you know, not moved on to the next because they have unfinished business or is it just like bad juju that's left there you could uh like i said i don't have we document these things and we're like this happened why did it happen we can only guess right because we 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 caught something we heard something there was a temperature change there was an electromagnetic interference here that's all we can prove that hey we caught a waveform here and it said this and there was nobody in the house but us yeah. Now, what that came from? Is it a ghost? Is it a demon? Is it a deity? Is it a god? Is it another dimension of people existing very glitch closely in the to matrix. us? Yeah. Is are we in a simulation? Is this some kind of glitch? Like, am I experiencing something a hundred years ago that's on a repeat loop? Um, the, the stone theory and all the stone quartz theory, and energy yeah. into the earth. You could take. There's a million different theories. Right. How do you prove that? The only thing we can say is we caught this voice. There's a waveform here, and this is what it said. And it actually makes sense given the history of the location. Yeah. Um, and it, why that happened, though. And I think interestingly, too, is that some people that might be into the paranormal are listening is like, I, I have beef, and I'll say it publicly. I don't care because I say it all the time. I have like beef with the paranormal community because every, a lot of teams, and I'm not taking shots at any specific teams, just there's a lot of people in the paranormal community that think that they've figured out the mysteries of the afterlife, and it drives me insane. The reason we take this position is because we've had so many mind-boggling experiences of audibles, physical attacks. I mean, on my Instagram, I've had, you know, 16 inch claw marks down my back. What? Um, yeah. If you go down to my Instagram, our Instagram, I gotta see this one. Um, we, you know, we've, we've been touched. We've been, you know, all it's sorts mostly of him. He gets touched. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they leave me alone, man. I, 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 it's in way my mind, down. I put a bubble up, you know, you're but, welcome. Um, welcome him in the devil. You see, growing up Mormon, they'd always say the devil can't hurt you unless you let him in. And I'm like, I don't want to let that guy in. There, I don't. <laughs> for me, there's there, for me there's truth to that. And I was actually talking to somebody while she's looking for this. Um, I was actually talking to somebody at uh, First Friday um, on Hildebrand, which is with the Forgotten Dollhouse. You're getting close to it. Um, 
But anyways, I was saying like the one thing that God gave humanity to make them unique was that they're free will, right? That's like the one thing that makes humanity different from angels and demons, right? Is that they have the will to decide what they want to do. And uh, with the devil, right? If you open yourself up to him, it's like you're... Was that it right there? No, a little that's, further. There I did get no, scratched a little once. Further. I forgot about that point. <laughs> more, 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 more. So that's multiple. Right there. Yeah. And that just shows up? Yeah. And then if you go to the right... It's the same mark about three months later. It's like a W or a Roman numeral four. Yeah, so this situation. this mark that I got on my back, I mean, I'm six foot five, so you can imagine that's about a 16 inch scratch. Mm -hmm. um, that's huge. That's the day I did my lone wolf, which is this 12 hours by yourself. That's what happened to me before I even started the challenge. So I was upstairs and uh, talking with Sonny, the owner, and I was up at, uh, and my buddy Ryan uh, McHugh. It was also the he's the first lone wolf i was the second one to ever do this and uh i was talking to toby who's the, the the bad spirit there that you want know, call him demon but he, he's evil he's very 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 bad and uh <laughs> i told him i was like hey toby i said we can coexist i said you don't mess with me i don't mess with you i said but if you do mess with me and that's exactly what i said i said i'm gonna put holy water in my mouth and spit it in your fucking face that's exactly <laughs> what i said to the t and it he called my bluff and as soon as i said that that appeared on my back. So the same mark in a different location. It's a Roman numeric for Toby Asmodeus. So there's an idea. Um, now, if if this is the belief, uh, I'm back and forth. I go back and forth on this, and I think he does too, because there's very interesting things that we can talk about that have happened with uh, Toby or Asmodeus, right? Um, he is, yeah. Uh, well, Asmodeus is 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 the second, the king of the second level of hell, extremely powerful demon, right? He starred in, uh, he was one of the the villain demons in the the Pope's Exorcist, right? Extremely powerful. Oh, well, so this force. is this is Satan, I guess. According to this, says Prince of Devils or just Satan. he is an extension of, I guess, what you would call Satan. Um, there, if you study demonology, so we can go down rabbit holes all day long. Yeah, let's but do it. Was, if we're learn. in the if we're in the realm of demonology, there are 70, 72 infernal, infernal spirits. spirits. If you study demonology, and this is coming from Talmudic Kabbalistic beliefs, um, that these, I guess, failed creations of God became these things, and they still answer to God, but their their principality and what they rule over the earth are negative, right? But they're also necessary. God allows them to continue to do their work they still take their orders from god but what they do is evil work and this particular demon is the demon of pride lust and greed and hill house is known for being a brothel so there's sinful acts prostitution murder has happened in that house gosh what else uh there's so many different i mean we could go forever i mean um black magic so that's uh, where <laughs> that's where that belief kind of comes from forever. um now we there the high demon of greed and lust exists in the middle of nowhere in texas um that's up for you to decide right everything's but he's in a, if you've ever experienced this uh, entity or spirit or ghost or just really angry thing that you can't see um you would probably call it a demon right because it's, yeah. it's not nice and you can audibly hear it and uh, it it's actually gross. quite it's quite startling if you've ever experienced him um so i don't I don't disagree with people saying it's a demon, right? So what is a demon? It's a negative spirit that can hurt you, right? And obviously it can leave a mark. It left a mark on you. Twice. Now, or is that just some angry spirit that's stuck around and he feeds off negative energy and when he touches you, there's some kind of electromagnetic transfer onto your skin and it leaves a mark and then it goes away after a while. Is mm. that all it is? Like, I it's really up to, to conjecture. So you can, you can approach things from like a... I guess uh, a scientific sense or you're trying to piece together things logically, not to say that religion or the occult is illogical, but the occult and religion try to explain things that we don't understand. Like where did we come from? So humanity has a crisis, right? We don't remember where we came from. So there's myths and there's legends and there's religions that try to define that. And it also tries to define where are we going? Cause we don't know the answer to either of those questions. Now science catches up to the occult and catches up to religion ever so slowly that red line moves to the right whereas waveforms electromagnetic energy things like that that was all occult they thought magnetism was magic mm -hmm. right but now it's not so that line keeps moving to the right moving to the right and i think us as human beings we try to explain things that we don't understand because there are things that we don't understand and we see them happen around us all the time 
like you said, you saw that the lady in white on the hill. Like, what was that? It must mm-hmm. be a ghost. But who knows what it really is? Um, I'm confident that one day, you know, we'll be on multiple planets and we'll be doing crazy stuff and maybe we'll figure it out. But as for right now, that's why we call it the paranormal because it's not normal and we don't know why. I, I've always said that if they put enough, enough money and minds into the paranormal as they do the Large Hadron Collider, we would know if ghosts exist or not. But, uh, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> well, uh, there's a lot of theories out there. In fact, there's a great uh, novel. It's a the first trilogy is a little brutal. It's all about this guy that just has no morals whatsoever. The second, it builds into that world, but it's to, you know, spoiler alert, it's our Earth, but because of the Large Hadron Collider, it ripped the veil. And so our willpower was much more strong and therefore magic became real. And so people who were very religiously minded, that religion actually gave them way more power. And so it completely changed the world. Hmm. And it's Hmm. fantastic. But the whole concept about how there's, you know, a, uh, a veil over our eyes and we can't see what's out there and willpower being able to, um, actually have a force on this earth. And then, You'll also hear a lot of people about the whole Mandela effect being attributed to the Large Hadron Collider, where they, again, they whether it's a a new universe or maybe our world merging with another universe, so that's why we remember things slightly different. All of these could be potential reasons why we're seeing ladies in white dresses up on a hill, and we have a collective experience. Yeah, and that's where, like you were saying, like science and the occult and... Um I think they they coexist. Yeah, exactly. So, like the multiple dimensional theory, right? Uh, as uh, as it works, maybe towards as quantum physics and mm-hmm. theory becomes more of a reality, and they start proving more and more things that it could be very well that there are multiple dimensions that exist within infinitesimal points of existence and time and space, right? It, and they're just bleeding over from each other, right? Could or be. it's the cause and effect thing. Like I, I like the concept of we didn't have multi universes multiple universe versus gosh but once we went into the realm of quantum physics more people started understanding and believing in it so that belief in it is actually creating what we are guessing at because that's all it is and what brian was saying is like you you could go so deeply like down the rabbit hole with what causes ghosts that you could talk about you it. Lose your it, mind. It, it would dr- it drives you insane. So uh, and funny enough, so, uh, there's a thing called a, a I call a reality sh- shifting event in okay. the paranormal, to where something and he experienced it, I experienced it. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately. No, both sides, yeah. Um, where something so profound happens that it changes the way that you view life entirely, okay, instantaneously. And it bothers you for like weeks, and like months. you, for him months. For me, it was it was a few weeks that I would just wasn't thinking straight. Like I was literally going crazy, almost like thinking everything. I just didn't understand how to re grasp reality after I experienced uh, Toby and my both of our experiences actually, um, for the first time where he was like felt like he was going to try and rip our heads off uh, metaphorically. Uh, yeah, so. See, that makes me think of psychedelics because people will have these mind-changing instances through like doing mushrooms and you hear the same uh, case over and over and over again where all of a sudden they see the world in a different way. And to some people, that's very, very difficult and uncomfortable because all of these beliefs that you knew were true and gave you peace in life are all of a sudden up for grabs and you're like, oh, how do I... How do I cope with this new concept that what I thought was real may not be real? Call it a uh, spiritual awakening, spiritual, if you want to. You can call it whatever mm-hmm. you want, right? Like I had a crazy experience that was wild. Um, or you have a spiritual experience and it kind of opened your eyes. And uh, Would you mind sharing the experience? I had a, um, yeah, so I would always kind of like see, see ghosts and hear them. And I never really thought much of it. Um, just like you, you know, you see things, but you don't want to like, okay, it's not real. Cause I don't want them to mess with me or whatever. Um, and this I was, is ever since you were a kid. Yeah. Um, okay. I wouldn't pay much mind to it, but, um, and I'm not like a psychic medium. I don't seeing ghosts all the time. Right. But you do see some things you're like, what was that? And then it's gone. Everyone experiences that and you're not crazy. Right. Uh, when I was, I was been, I've been agnostic and atheist most of my life. I would say probably for 29 years of my life. Um, Your parents weren't religious at all? uh, My mom was raised Catholic, and um, she 
kind of moved away from that. Uh, my dad was an atheist. He thought, you know, he's like, it would be nice to believe that, uh, that Jesus is real and everything's going to be fine when we pass away and everyone's going to be happy forever. But he's just like, I'm not buying it. Like, I don't think that's reality. And uh, he was very logical about all that. And uh, I, kinda, I guess I kind of carried that with me. And my mom was like, just decide for yourself. You know, but one thing my dad always said to me was, when I pass away, I will come back to you and I will let you know that the afterlife is real. Uh, I'll do my best. If it's in my power, I will do it. Um, about 20, he passed away in 2021 uh, from a heart attack. I would say prior to that or around that time, I would say prior, um, I had an out of body experience. I was, I was in bed and uh, I was laying in bed and I thought I heard what were helicopter plays, but my body was literally vibrating. And, um, I was coming out of my body while I was sleeping and I was able to witness myself sleeping in my bed. I was able to witness my room in real time. And there was this massive, like galactic being standing in front of me and he had the Milky way spinning over his head. And he like, he took it from me and it's just this immense being of light and he handed it to me. And then he gave me a sword and he said, if you want to live first, you must die. And it was just insane. And then I literally like, I killed myself. And in that moment, I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I'm alive. Like, I'm not afraid of death anymore. I've conquered, I've conquered that fear. And I woke up from that, like, dear God, like it was so nerve wracking. Like I was, I was a wreck. I was, I chain smoked cigarettes. I like drank tons of wine just to like, kind of like calm myself down for like weeks. It drove me nuts because that experience, call it a dream, call it what you will. It was so real to me that in that moment, I knew that I had a soul in my entire life. I thought we're just animals that are really smart. You know, but I realized that it was a very symbolic dream. And in a lot of religions, that's the message. That's the message that a lot of religions deliver. And fast forward, my dad passes away. I had a, an intense experience where he took me all over the world in an astral projection or a dream, what have you. And he was showing me the monuments and everything. He's like, the afterlife is real. And it was a waking physical dream where I could experience reality, just like how we are now. But I'm in a dream. I'm in a different world. And he told me one thing. He's like, every religion has some truth. Every religion has some lies. It's up to you to decide. But he's like, best of luck to you. So he let me know. He let me know. Like, seriously, that we, we made a deal, you know, way before he got sick and passed away. He made a deal. And I feel like he made good on that deal. Um, didn't expect to tell that story. But yeah, it was, um, that's, that's my spiritual journey. So thus far. Yeah. And you you nailed it on the head with the symbolism, right? So being raised very religious, I used to be, you know, a missionary down in Brazil, a very, very active, strong believer. Um, had a few instances where close people to me, you know, fell away, as they say. I ended up um, falling away and having more life experiences that, you know, have, have gotten me to where my current mindset is. But all of the knowledge that I gained, I don't write it off as just mumbo jumbo. Uh, there's a reason that we have all of this, the, whether it's the Bible or the Quran or whatever it is. These, these stories that have been passed down have such similarities across the entire world, right? And one that constantly shows up, like you said, is going to the underworld and back or being reborn or baptism if you're Christian. Like these, these are all the same types of uh, loss of self, uh, loss of ego. Um, the the road to Ulysses, is that how you pronounce it? Are you familiar with that? Mm. So like all these ancient Greek philosophers that kind of created our current civilization and yeah. democracy and all that, they were all part of this church with no name. Um, and I, I speak about this book a lot just because it, it was it's very well done. It's called The Immortality Key. Brian Murarescu, he started studying ancient religions and wanted to go back because he was raised Catholic, wanted to see the original scripts and kind of educate himself more. And through that journey, he actually kind of pivoted to um, looking at psychedelics and ancient urns and pottery. And he found out about this place called Ulysses where people would walk to this secret place 
where a person, usually a woman, or maybe always would prepare a, a sacrament, a special drink. They would visit hell, be reborn, come back, and then they were immortal at that point. They they had be, been reborn. They understand themselves. They have self now. They, they're they the people that created a democracy and created these things that we all collectively get to enjoy now. And to me, that's pretty pretty powerful right there because and if, if you look into like the the psychedelic community it does have what they call a neuroplastic um you know benefits and you mm -hmm. can get there through meditation you can get through through fasting and all these different things that you hear throughout history and scriptures but all of them are that that instance where you used to believe x and now all of a sudden you're open to believing way more and it's it's almost taking it from like the world's black and white to Oh my God! I didn't realize there were all these colors and spectrums. At least that's how I see it. Yeah. Well, it's funny, yeah, because uh, I mean, Aleister Crowley was doing that, uh, you know, in the eighteen late eighteen hundreds into the early nineteen hundreds. You know, psychedelics are the fast track to spirituality, where he was like doing massive amounts of psychedelics, or really drugs in general, and then trying to evoke in then have his acolytes possessed by different gods of polytheistic religions and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, but it was through the it was through, fast tracked through the consumption of hard drugs and psychedelics you know stuff like that so and i think there's a lot of ways to skin a cat and it's because your experience even though uh and i'm not i think you were just sleeping sober right absolutely yep and I so was. you're like hey that drugs had nothing to do with it you still have that experience but if you know the chemistry of your brain we have this thing called dmt mm -hmm. that's up in there dimethyltryptamine it's, it's what helps us dream mm. that's apparently what gives us our life our near-death experiences that everyone has so maybe it was all drugs right maybe the things that you know we experience that are collectively is there's a a wavelength a frequency maybe a electromagnetic pulse that all of us it hits a node in our brain and we're all looking at one thing we're like holy shit are you looking at this woman over here and they're like yeah we are well it's interesting you say a uh, note because um i don't know do you know what cymatics are no so cymatics are the projection pattern projection of sound so basically if you put like salt or sand on a resonance plate and then oh, play yeah. a frequency through it it'll make a shape right like the lord of the rings intro i don't know if yeah you've seen so that. i mean that's been a thing that you know people believed in spirituality that that light and sound are the true essence of energetic like interpretation of life so in the 70s they did a experiment where they put very very sensitive like microphones that were listening to the background hiss of a church and then they played that frequency through a cymatic plate or a resonance plate. And then they looked at the cymatic pattern and the stained glass geometric shape in the church was the exact same cymatic frequency Whoa. as the stained glass. But it That's was cool. the, healing, the healing energy that people feel when they enter the church is the cymatic frequency that is being shown in the glass because the human body is water and it's electricity and it's picking up on that healing frequency and as people pray and project into that that frequency and align with that vibrational wavelength the more powerful it gets and uh like sound bath type stuff sound bath, what about exactly. the brass bells oh the brass that? bells <laughs> yeah. yeah um all right, we were talking so, about this yesterday, and I'm like, that's actually so really I just, interesting. I just came back from Italy. Uh, my my wife is Italian. We met when we were, I was in Italy, and uh, you know we got married. And so my in laws are in Europe. So m my uh, family just took a trip over there. We went to Venice, Florence, Rome, and then I stayed an extra week. So we went to the Vatican. Right, uh, mm -hmm. my father always wanted to see the Vatican. My great grandmother was a very, very, very deep uh, Eastern Orthodox uh, Catholic woman uh, from long time ago so he always wanted to go see it um so we did we would go on the tour we go through and i noticed and my brother goes do you know that the vatican is one of the only places that has brass bells left in the world i said what are you talking about so this is conspiracy this is not fact obviously this is this <laughs> but it's is fun let's public you know to be clear this is purely conspiracy um conspiracies are fun that the conspiracy uh, but anyway that a, a lot of in world war ii a lot of the brass bells in Europe were melted. They were destroyed from churches uh, during the war. Like there's like documentation of like these brass bells being taken out and being replaced with like uh, uh, different types of metals. For any reason? That brass bells produce the cleanest 
reverberation of sound frequency in existence that it's the cleanest sound when you hit a bell made of brass it's the purest frequency so that these bells in these areas like the vatican is where um they didn't want people to have these healing frequencies anymore Hmm. so that and like hitler was like obsessed with the occult and that you know he was trying to commune with like extraterrestrials and like control the world and he didn't (laughs) want people to have these things so he was like destroying these bells and stuff and the vatican was involved with it it's this whole thing right it's like this crazy giga brain like (laughs) conspiracy that i don't believe but that's it but what's interesting is when you do go around and you listen to the bells at the vatican they are very pure you hear it and then I was interesting. I, yeah, it's kind of like gives a me goosebumps bath, when know? I think about it. Sound bath healing. Yeah, like St. Peter's Basilica has very pure sounding bells. And uh, I went to my wife's town, not the same sound, a much more hollow pitched, like, or like a higher pitched sound. It almost like hurts your ears. Hmm. It's like, a, not hurts your ears, but it's like it's more harsh on the ears. Like the brass bells are very nice on the ears. Like it doesn't even hurt. Like you don't even realize like how loud those bells are. Like it's softer metal, so it gives them like more like full tone. I don't know what it is. My brother explains it with like he's a big music guy, and he there's an artist that he sees. His name is called Mercive Electronic Music. It's an electronic music guy, but that he designs his sound with his PK audio system so well that the frequency isn't sharp, and the, how the wavelength enters the eardrum. It's specifically designed where your ears aren't even ringing after you go see a show. Because the way that the sound, the wavelengths are designed in the sound. And when they hit the ear, they don't, they, they enter the ear a certain type of way. So that was kind of this example that he gave to me. That is so cool to me. I'm, I'm like a wannabe audiophile, but I mm. never, I mean, it's probably years to get to the point where you even understand half of all that. Yeah, the sound guy must be paid a lot. But yeah, the Vatican was like an interesting place. I was telling Brian um, that I think that the Vatican, uh, so the Sistine Chapel, right, where Michelangelo's creation is painted, um, I think that's a portal to God. Hmm. Um, and I know a mason it doesn't matter who he is or what he is what his relation is to me um but yeah so he was informing me that uh the vatican is built in a very specific place for a very specific reason that the masonic brothers know about and it's it's there for a reason and like it sits on what, the gates of hell closed type of situation it sits or? it sits on one of the purest and most powerful <clears throat> pieces of electromagnetic energy on earth hmm. and is this stuff that we can record where we're I had mentioned earlier, I'd like to get in like the type of equipment y'all use, or maybe you're educated on how, how do we as a society get to a, a single belief? Well, that's, you know, science is kind of the way we get rec- um, reproducible data that we can record and show and, and record or uh, write down. Do you guys have, well, we got audio, we got video. Do you have any other sensors? Tri-field meter, electromagnetic fields. Yeah, so you can record those things. Some mm-hmm. places are naturally more elevated than others. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, that's why people don't live underneath power lines anymore because you're being exposed to intense radiation and then people get cancer. We didn't figure that out until until when? Actually, my dad worked on that project in the Air Force at Brooks, yeah, yeah. Brooks Army uh, Air Force Base. He was he was literally putting rats underneath like scale uh, industrial power lines and studying the influence that they had no on like. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so they. I mean, not for the rats. Not for the rats, but uh, yeah, I gave them cancer big time. Like huge tumors so would like pop a up. Good on baseline them. for electromagnetic frequency with a tri field meter is about zero point seven two zero point eight. Maybe a little lower. Are you talking about in milligauss? Yeah, milligauss. Yeah, point zero five, point zero six is probably like your baseline with Wi-Fi and stuff. Unless you're like right. Put your phone up there. It'll be twenty one. You know, it's detecting the radiation from your phone. Um, Which you put up next to your brain when you. Yeah, so that's that's probably not good for us, right? (laughs) Yeah. Someone recently (laughs) said, "Hey, you need to read through the disclaimer that you're signing when you get one of these phones." I think it's Apple. Um, Someone fact check me, but yeah, they have this huge uh, section of like, "Hey, we are not liable." Oh, waiting on me. The yeah the um, yeah the radiation the, the, the computer crap out again. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they first invented Bluetooth, they uh, the people who invented them refused to wear anything on their ears because they knew how much energy is being pumped out of those things. Like no, huh. I'm not doing that. But so they developed we're all it. Just fucked is what you're saying. No, it's not a, necessarily. Yeah, but no. we're being exposed to radiation that's but ra- in some cases 20, 30, 40, 100, 200 times more than the normal amount. 
That's yeah. true. Yeah, but radiation's life. You know, it's all over the place. I mean, you know? we're getting yeah. bombarded yeah. constantly with it. Like it travels through the entire Earth. Yeah, but a little backstory on 444 so 444 uh, in in resolu- um comparison to not comparison um connection to saint michael the archangel right so brian was talking about his his faith beliefs right his spiritual beliefs my spiritual beliefs are very similar of what his father told him in his experience right that everybody has a piece of the puzzle and that so i'm a universalist so just like he is a universalist that you know we believe in all these entities and beings are have, are true to some extent right to me and in my family, St. Michael is extremely important to us. Um, he's always looked out for my father. And, you know, my brothers, two brothers are less spiritual uh, than I am. But, like, for me, he saved me from a house haunting. Uh, that's when I started believing in God and all that stuff. It's, it's, that's a whole other story, right? But uh, I carry around, him around my neck all the time. Uh, I have this is blessed by the Pope, right? Uh, uh, this little medallion I have. And you said it's St. Michael? St. Michael, the Saint archangel. St. Michael, the archangel, yeah. Mm-hmm. Defend and, us in battle. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and uh, so 444 is his synchronicity number. It's associated with him. So there's a thing called angel code or light code, which is... There numeral. is. Yeah, there is. <laughs> uh, That's an actual photo. Yeah, yeah actual photo. Yeah. <laughs> um, numerological... Handsome, dude, what the heck? Yeah, he was in an 80s rock hair stud. band. Yeah. Um, He's supposed to be pretty. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, four four four. Noticing angel numbers. Um, I just know that four 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 is associated with him. And anywho, so when we were in 11, Rome, eleven is also a good one. Yeah, when we were in Rome with my family, we went to. That was the day we went to Vatican City, and I told him because I have a little altar to him in my house. So it's a statue, some candles, and uh, I have a rosary, precious rosary that's been blessed by the Pope as well. That sits here uh, in front of it. You know, whatever. I told him that I was going to come see him. Uh, somewhere in Rome or in Italy. I said, I'm going to come see you at your altar somewhere. And so we were at Vatican City in St. Peter's Basilica. I said, oh, what what better place to go look for an altar to St. Michael than St. Peter's Basilica, right? So I'm looking, and St. Peter's Basilica fits 60,000 people at one time. It's huge, yeah. You can fit 60,000 people in there at one time. It's gigantic, right? So there's people there to help you. So we're looking around. We've walked around it like twice can't find his altar but i know it's in there because i googled it right so i asked two of the workers they don't know even know where it is i was like okay thanks guys you're supposed to work here but whatever so i asked the third guy he has a little map he finds it and he goes oh yeah it's over here you know my wife's translating and uh, he goes unfortunately it might be blocked off because of uh mass that's about to start and it's like okay we'll go check it out anyway so we go all the way across the the basilica and it's blocked off so i'm like shit all right whatever like you know it's okay you know so we're supposed to say shit in the vatican I didn't say shit in the Vatican. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did not say it, yeah. I was like, well, I was like, more like, that's what I was thinking, though. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we, we're like, all right, whatever, no big deal. So we, we leave and we go do our thing. And there was a place that we went to called the uh, Convento de, de Cappuccini, which is the, the convent of the Cappuccini friars. And that's where like 4,000 fr- friars are buried in the crypts. Um, if you want to look up pictures of that, that's a convent of the uh, Convento de Cappuccini in Rome. <laughs> That's uh, quite the interesting place. It's uh, ornamentated with the bones of 4,000 friars. Oh, like the all visible bones? Oh, yeah. That's, That's cool. It's, it's, uh, throw that up. Pull makes, it up Makes Catholicism quick. seem a lot cooler, in my opinion. Um, Catholicism is wild. We could talk about that for hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, many, yeah, so there, here, here it is. Um, so we went, to go, we went to go see this because obviously I'm into interesting macabre uh, and morbid things. That's all bones. It's all bones and dead bodies of friars in the past. They're very like memento oh mori. Right? They have a thing that when you walk into the crypt, it says, as we are, you shall be. Click that one kind of in the middle. The, uh, up. Yeah, that one right there. That's cool. Yeah. As you are, or as we are, you shall be. And as, uh, or as we are, you shall be. And as uh, you are, we once were. It's like remember death kind of thing. They were very into that. Um, anyways, so we go see the crypt, right? It was really cool. Took some pictures and videos. Really interesting thing to see. I've been to the catacombs in Paris, so I wanted to see this as well. Anywho, so we get done with this. Now, now mind you, we've done the whole day. You know, we're just enjoying ourselves. Nobody's paying attention to time. Nobody, you know, we're just, we're just, we're just vibing. We're just going in, visiting, yeah. having a good time. So anyway, so the church above us is like the, it's like the magnificent, con- or the immaculate conception of the mo- of Mother Mary's uh, Basilica or something, which is the church above the crypt. And uh, we had no intention of going into this church, right? And uh, so anyways, my brother comes, my younger brother, Cameron, comes running down the stairs. So imagine there's some steep stairs that go up to the big doors of the church. And uh, he's like, dude, there's an altar in there of St. Michael. Here's a picture. I was like, no kidding. I said, okay. So I run up the stairs, right? And I'm like, oh. 
sweet so i finally get to say hello and pay homage and you know reverence to to to, to a very you know large altar of michael a place in a, in a in a very cool place in rome uh so i do that and uh my brother my other brother ryan my older brother and my dad come walking up the stairs and they stand on the altar and i look down at my watch at the the second all four of us were standing on the altar it was 444 that's cool and which is very interesting because literally the way that it was broken down and how it happened is my little brother literally ran down the stairs. I ran up the stairs. Like everything happened perfectly. It was almost like, and think about that, four family members, three three brothers, one father, three sons, one dad, all standing at the exact same time of a very important figure of our life. And it's his synchronization. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love when that stuff happens. Crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. So... He was telling his experience when he had the, you know, I, I would call it a, I don't know. They call them OBEs or out-of-body experiences or uh, lucid dreams or astral projections. Yeah. And that's what kind of was the driving factor to you kind of get your mind expanded to be able to, as I was saying, what, yeah. turn the world from a black and white to a multicolor. It was so out of pocket too. It wasn't, uh, went to bed sober, had to... I think it was like a Saturday night or something, just chill, tired, going to bed, not thinking about spirituality and mortality or how I have a soul or I don't, Did, you know, just going to bed and uh, have this intense experience that leaves you shaken to the core and is so out of pocket, completely sober. Um, Dylan, I know have that you I, had a similar one? Sorry, I cut you off there. I know you're saying the brain, you know, has chemicals in it and all that good stuff, but um, I don't know. I don't know if you can, uh, it, to me, it was real, you yeah, know, yeah. and um I guess that's all that really matters. With and who's spiritual to say affairs. it's not both chemical and spiritual? Maybe one leads to the other, and you can't sure. have both without Absolutely. either. I've never had an out of body experience. Um, I've tried. I was very interested in it when I was a, a young buck. I would always try to like figure out how to astral project and stuff because mm -hmm. there's like mental practice, mental exercises that you can do, like climbing an imaginary rope when your eyes are closed, laying down, and you have to like climb towards a light or rolling inside like your body's like a shell and like to roll back and forth like your spirit and then you know pop out of your body. Um, the closest I got is like a very similar experience that people have when they do transcendental med meditation, which is like this like purple swirl swirling portal that like you see and you can like you, your eyes are closed but they're open at the same time because your body's asleep and your mind's awake that's like the first step is like put your body to sleep and then wake up your mind apparently which i guess i did and i just seen this like portal like purple portal swirling in my bedroom scared the crap out of me and i scared myself out of whatever spot Mindset this was you'd yeah reached. i would um astro project here and there um or go into lucid dreams or whatever you want to call them um for me, the way I approach it is I'm going to sleep every single night anyway. Um, I'm going to use that willpower and that intention to try to understand the realm that's inside of my mind. And if you do that well enough, it comes to a point where this is no longer inside of your mind. This is reality outside of your body while you're asleep. Some people call that the soul. Some people call that consciousness. And this can be proven with with physics and with science that your consciousness can wander from yourself. It's actually the CIA released. Yeah. <laughs> they released a long time ago, actually. Um, Stargate, right? No, yeah. no, not Stargate. No. Uh, I forget the actual name of it. Was it like um, five or six? It was years the Gateway ago, Experiment. The gateway Experiment. The gateway Experiment. Uh, yeah, she's pulling it up now. Oh, you're Good quick. stuff. Um, they they proved that astral projection is being used to spy on foreign adversaries. Yep and vice versa and we've been doing this for a very long time and remote viewing and remote viewing and we we can see what a place looks like before we attack or you know whatever kind of strategic advantage it gives our government uh, we have professionals that do this and uh, th it's been really you don't have to take my word for it you can go read the document if yeah you're. it says to army here, pull that back up it says uh, to commander u.s army operational group uh, you tasked me to provide an assessment of the gateway experience in terms of its mechanics and ultimate practicality. That's I, I got to read through that. So that what they so have done in this paper is they've taken the occult sciences out of it. They've taken religion out of it and they've given it 
Really? I mean, look, that's the uh, Egyptian symbolism is in the brain, in case anyone didn't know that. So um, we're looking the, at a brain here. With the brain is a, uh, a supercomputer. Uh, basically, in this, they say the brain is a supercomputer that can transpose or ascend out of this reality that we're in. And we can basically enter different dimensions with our brain because our brain is so complex. It is a machine. I just remember something real quick that ties in what he's saying. Michelangelo's creation, I told him about this yesterday. God is sitting inside of a brain, by the way. He's not sitting in a cloud. Yeah, pull that Sistine Chapel up. Yeah, yeah. so ca carry on what you're saying, Brian. I, yeah, the brain, uh, and this, you know, they're talking about kundalini psychosis or transcendence, right? This is what they figured kundalini out. Kundalini is like a yoga type Yeah, it's realm. kundalini is the life force energy that you awaken through your spine, and that's how you become enlightened. That's how you become a Buddha. That's how you become a master. Right, that's how you become an enlightened individual, right? You awaken <laughs> the seven chakras inside of yourself, which if you actually look in Revelations, they talk about seven seals at the end times. And that Jesus is a slain lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. That synchronicity is not, uh, it's, it's, it's symbolism built into the Bible. And he's and we're still looking at this government document, and it's talking about hertz. So it's talking yeah. about different frequencies as well, which a lot of people chalk up to, you know, pseudoscience mumbo jumbo. And I guess it comes down to your definition of pseudoscience, but absolutely, um, it's you can't discredit the amount of resources that they put into not only um, remote viewing uh, psychedelics, like there's whole programs about, around LSD trying to use that to break through and do similar items like this. I don't think um, the type of people that were running the CIA back in the you know 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s were, I, let's just say they were very serious people. And I don't think we'd be spending millions and millions of dollars if there wasn't at least something to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this, uh, I, yeah, it, when you see the picture, because he was talking about the brain being a supercomputer, and I told you that, like, the I thought that the Sistine Chapel was like a portal to, like, God. And it's very interesting because underneath the brain where God is sitting as he's touching the finger of Adam, right, and creating man, um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's got to be a picture of, like, actually, like, the whole actual. He's scrolling down. Ceiling. Maybe they'll have, like, a full. I mean, everybody knows the painting, right? You know, it's a very famous, very, very, very famous painting. Um, oh, so this is going There's probably into, some other symbolism there of the brain. There, there is, yeah. yeah. But, like, there, it's just literally just, like, the actual picture of the, the, the dome, like, of him sitting. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, pull up. Yeah, yeah there you go. He... <laughs> He's literally sitting in oh, the it's shape of a human of, brain. He's sitting oh, yeah. in the shape of a brain, yeah, right? Like the cord coming out. Yeah. So like it's like this whole thing that he's talking about that like, you know, the belief that uh there was a there's a belief that we all are God and that it, God exists in our minds and that our minds are capable of transcending and becoming these extremely powerful beings like consciously right and like that was a piece that they believe michelangelo was like trying to they they were saying that it was something about like the creation i can't remember what self deification is what they call it yeah and there was something yeah. else that the guide was that talking we are about all gods but, yeah i can't remember but only if you pursue this very like rigid and narrow path that can lead you to enlightenment mm. that can lead you to divinity which in a lot of religions or myths or legends there are men who are now gods right because they went through the trials and tribulations like buddhism and them. you can ascend choose to come back and help others and go back and forth type of thing but even yes. like even like jesus right like I, i'm not a i don't read, read the bible too like a couple passages and touched here and there but like when he goes up into the mountains or whatever for a few days or weeks or months or whatever and he comes back down with like a message from god and it's like this interpretation that he goes up there and just meditates the whole time and he like ascends and become like it's there's like thoughts of, of things like yeah, and that, that happened with Moses that happened with, um, gosh, uh, yeah. may, almost a, any figure in the Bible, right? They'd be, they had this experience, they received this message and now they're better off for it. And they're giving back to humanity what they have learned. And that's what and, happens with saints too, right? Like saints are these, like these beings of these, these human beings like Christ, right? Like Christ is the, the, the son of God, obviously, but, uh, like with these saints, they live a very narrow and good life, right? And then, like, they develop themselves into these, like, holy beings that become, like, imbued as yeah, like, these, like... they're almost, they're, like, deification. They're they de become... Exactly. They're not quite gods, more, but they're more than just human demigods souls. Demigods or something. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what the Catholics do. I don't know. Well, <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> they uh, I can't remember what the word is for put, making someone a saint. What is it? Um, I can't remember. I'll remember randomly, so... 
but yeah, it's like all this interesting stuff with the brain and like the self and like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It could go on tangents, but well, I think that it, it, there's got to be a, a string of truth in all these things that have made it for thousands of years. Canonization. And that's it. Canonization. Yeah. Okay. Canonization. The idea that we as humans have been able to get a recorded history and pass it down. Um, some attribute that to one of the greatest technologies ever, and that's been able to allow us to communicate better and grow and, and get better. But I, every time I get in like some really deep thought about humanity and existence and what's it mean to life and all that, um, it always comes down to language with me. And maybe that's because I speak a couple different languages. I took linguistics course in college, and I think about you know how we form these different words and how when I when I was in Brazil, I got to the point where I was just, I was dreaming in Portuguese. My, I was fluent in Portuguese. It was harder to speak English after two whole years of just speaking another language. And yeah. so when, um, when I say that some words simply do not have meaning in the other language, mm -hmm. it's true. You have to like make a roundabout way of expressing yourself because it, there is no true translation. We have things that are written down um, even millennia ago that we're finding and even more recently we're going to notice that when something's written down it becomes static and for millions of years allegedly um, humans have been passing down very dynamic information it's stories it changes with the culture with the ethnicity with the understanding and so the understanding is the important part I think if you think about it it's not what the word is it's what what they want to express behind the understanding. And so we praise the printing press by giving us the ability to spread all this information, but it made it this static piece of information. So now someone can go to it and they say, see, this is correct, this is right. But they're pointing at a word, they're not pointing at the meaning. And they may be interpreting that word way off base from what the original meaning was, but now they're using it as a weapon, as like a bludgeon of saying like, this is correct, I'm right. You're wrong. Well, that's why there's so many different versions of the Bible. It's yeah. been translated a million times backwards and forwards, you know? So it's absolutely, it's the game of telephone almost at that point. Yeah. It's like, how do we get back to what the original meaning is? And going back to, you know, the picture of God touching Adam's hand and it's the brain. Every, I, I like going back to my upbringing because like, I, I don't think any religion should be discarded because they all mm -hmm. have a lot of the same beliefs. I would agree with you, yeah. And mm -hmm. with Mormonism, they consistently tell you that you need to learn it for yourself. And they say things like, the truth shall set you free. And you have to have a personal communion with communion with God. It's not someone up there yeah. on a pulpit telling I would, you. I would agree with you there. You have to have that connection. And now that I've gone through multiple life changes, um, I've gone through the the mind fuck that is, oh wow, like there's a lot more out there. Yeah. Um, it's not as black and white as it used to be. I I consistently will make comparisons from one thing to the next and, and like it, it shocks me how many similarities between like the Mormon beliefs and Buddhist beliefs and then, you know, psychonauts, people who are really into psychedelics or people who are trying to get, they, they sit up there and meditate for years they all kind of get back to the same thing. It's that we are children of God. What do children do? They turn into their parents. So if we're children of God, then what's the inevitability? Like or that. if you're Buddhist, it's the, hey, there is a mindset, a way that you can think and act that's going to get you to a Godhood, where is that a metaphor for just being, you know, that's what, humanity needs to not fuck over each other and that's what we've all grasped to so we can use synergy and become better or is there something that truly is metaphysically beyond this life that we can have a further existence and not to be a pessimist but it's definitely all within our best benefit to believe that there's an afterlife right we will yeah. I, I crave for that i would love i wouldn't say it's i'd say it's being optimistic not pessimistic oh, yeah well i guess the pessimistic side is that maybe we want to believe that so that's why all these that's why we yeah. have that belief oh, and maybe okay. there isn't you know mm -hmm. and I, I think if i look at you know the paranormal activity that y'all see i've witnessed multiple miracles in my life back in the day it 
that's what gives you that seed of hope that you're like, yeah, I'm going to choose to believe that we do have something and I'm going to live myself, live my life accordingly. And whether it's not, whether it is or not, it's the whole Pascal's wager. God, I'm glad we have it so people can have some belief if some yeah. something that gives them hope in life. It, and maybe... Um, <laughs> Because if you look at existence and you're just looking at life without uh, the hope that there's something else, uh, what does the world tell you to do? You need to make as much money as you can and you need to have as much sex as you can. Like it's very um, pessimistic. Like it's very materialistic. Materialistic. And, and then it, what is it all about? Like it, well, doesn't, well, it doesn't even matter. You know what I mean? Like what, uh, why yeah, are we here? Nihilistic. Yeah. It yeah. That matters. The yeah. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I very much believe, right, that the earth is the devil's domain very convinced of that um that everything bad that happens and like i said i don't know if i necessarily even believe in heaven per se um but i do believe that there is an evil evil exists here and uh i mean like i said i'm not i don't a non not non-denominational i just don't have a religion that i associate with but i just familiarly right the what i understand is you know christian you know uh theology right mm -hmm. um but anyways when when satan was lucifer was cast down from the heavens where did he go here he fell to earth you know what i mean like all the bad things that, that exist here i think is because like those this evil energy this evil force controls here right this is his domain right um and that God and the angels have 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 play here, right? Because um, somebody actually asked me, I know I'm kind of all over the place, but if somebody asked me, it's like, why is it so hard to communicate with with God and angels? Well, I said, I said, I personally don't think it is, but if you were to think about it that way, it's because that the demons and the devil are right here with us on this existence. Like, uh, what what are the, the Jewish uh, they believe they call angels and demons uh, those entities? What do they call them? Uh, Nephilim? No, not Nephilim. There's a there's a word for it. The um, Kabbalistic idea of like uh, what there, there's a specific name. They're not angels and demons. They're they're entities of duality. Mm. Uh, those that exist within our sphere of existence and reality. Uh, that some are much better than others, and the good, the yin and yang. You know what I mean? It's the like balance in life. The balance, like the angels are. Here's the thing, though. So. So there's the, you know, if we're going to believe in demons and angels, you look at life, you don't, you wouldn't appreciate things if you didn't know how bad they could be either. If all we knew mm -hmm. was heaven and everything was good, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't care. Like the, you look at a rose, you're like, oh my God, the rose is beautiful. The rose smells great. You wouldn't appreciate the rose if you didn't know how ugly a spider was. You know? So it's like, like yin and yang, like these things, yeah. if you choose to believe in them, um, I don't think they can exist without the other and it's in a very delicate balance and us as human beings, we can choose bad or we can choose good. And we know we're born with that. We know what those things are. We know when something's good and we know when something's bad. And we, and, and that's something, um, with the, uh, paranormal stuff too. Like when you encounter good spirits and bad, you know, when it's yeah, bad you, spirit. you can feel it. You You're can like, feel it. This thing wants to cause harm. Cause, this thing yeah. wants to potentially harm us or scare us or have us leave. And then you'll have a pleasant feeling like that was whoever that was, those that was not, you know, threatening in any way, shape or form. There's duality there in that realm as well. And these evil spirits are, are right here with us. And like I was, uh, I was uh, trying to say was the, um, to communicate with a demon like or an evil spirit because they're right here they're right they're accessible on this level right um so like when a lot <laughs> so if you're listening to this and you're a fortune teller or a psychic don't be offended by by what i would say it's my opinion okay <laughs> that psychics and mediums tap into demonic energy oh interesting that the information that they receive is from the sources of demonic energy it's called black energy whether they do it knowingly or unknowingly is that no uh because when you're dealing with demonic forces or evil forces well specifically demonic okay is that the key characteristics of a, like a possession or dealing with a demon is that somebody is speaking a tongue of which they do not know and that's not gibberish like uh you know 
you know, just speaking randomly, that means that you're an American and you've never been to, uh, you know, Iceland, but you're speaking their native tongue, right? Like mm-hmm. that's, that'd be insane. There's no way to do that. Right. Yeah. Fluently. The second one is things unknown. Like literally I would be able to tell you, this is just a complete example, but like if you had somebody that passed away in your life and I would tell you the day, the time and how they died, that's unknown knowledge. Right. And you know what they look like, even though I've never seen them. And what uh, they're wearing. Yeah. Then third one would be impossible contortions and inhuman abilities, like strength and stuff like that. Right. So what do fortune tellers and psychics and mediums have? They have unknown knowledge. They have no things mm-hmm. that people do not know. And uh, that's because the energy that flows within this realm is very accessible, and it's the black energy. It's immediately accessible well honey if you're listening to this you are using demonic powers see she, me she always personally. jokes around that she's psychic she doesn't really joke she I honestly believes that she's slightly psychic she doesn't like practice it or uh, like, do like i said i'm not it. to be offensive or like making anybody no so. i'm saying it actually makes perfect I'm like sense kinda... i am married to the devil so it, <laughs> I mean, it's no just... it's not that they do it and that they're bad it's yeah, just that yeah, the, yeah, the information and what they're pulling from is that energy that is, and the so that if they're, they're like, n- if they're negative uh, entities, are they going to actively speak lies? So if you are listening to a psychic, it, you shouldn't. Not, I don't think believe so because not all or was it like accurate. Not all demons are inter- inherently evil off the rip. Oh, so there okay. are demons that now just because, uh, like, in my my belief, right, that that they're tapping into that black energy. There is no demon sitting on their shoulder telling them things it's Mm -hmm. that they have the conscious ability with their mind and their body to tap into that ether and pull from it and Mm -hmm. it speaks to them now there are people that have demons theoretically you know metaphorically sitting on their shoulder talking things he's pointing at me i don't have a demon (laughs) no no no. (laughs) but i just more you know just for you know visual representation metaphorically um so if people can tap into that dark energy are there people can tap into the light energy uh, yes. You call them prophets, I guess. Is that what? Absolutely. A, um, or is it an me, angel? I guess would be the 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 counterpoint. Me personally, to that. Um, I I'm not a psychic. I'm not a medium. I don't do any of that. Um, but uh, I don't know if I'm sold on his theory. Like I don't. It's hard to know for sure. Yeah. Um, does it does it track? Absolutely. Um, is there validity to it? I think so. Um, is it proven? No. Um, can P- can you increase your consciousness to remote view and and see things that are outside of yourself? Can you have lucid dreams and astral project and see a reality that's real outside of your body? Yes. Is that stealing powers from the devil? I personally don't think so. But there's some people that'll be like, absolutely, that's black magic. That's witchcraft. If you do yoga, that's witchcraft. If you do, <laughs> but any if you're kind in of- church and you do the same thing, then it's God. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. It's like, what is it? You know, we're trying to define it because we don't understand what it is. So. But you it know, just, it's kind of a paint job. Like, do we want to believe in demons and angels, or do we want to believe in science and, and electromagnetic fields and different dimensions? It's I full fledged believe in them, demons, angels, both of them. You know, I just think that, like I said, they're 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 beings of duality, mm-hmm. right? But I do think that the demons, right, are intently bad, right? They they're bad, very much outweighs their good, but they do have good in them. That's why I was saying that they're not inherently bad off the rip. There's people that work with demons, like literally, like uh, uh, we've talked to people that work with demons in person and say that it's not there. Everything's fine. I've talked to people that believe that Lucifer is not the devil. They believe Lucifer is an angel of light, which uh, that's actually Lucifer was translated from the original Bibles as the light bringer. Yeah. The light, the light, the light bringer. And he's only mentioned once or twice in the Bible, this whole mm-hmm. thing that Satan is Lucifer. Um, I, I'm still trying to figure out where that exactly came from. Um, there's multiple translations. Like you were saying, you were about the language. Um, Lucifer is mentioned in the Bible, and it's 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 the North Star, it's the the light bringer. Um, so Luciferians, they believe that Lucifer appears to you as a being of light, which is something that I experienced. I'm not saying that what came to me was Lucifer, mm-hmm. but it definitely changed my life, and it was very shocking and profound. Um, so Luciferians believe that Lucifer will come to you after you've defeated the devil. You've lived a straight and narrow life. Hmm. Lucifer is God's most beautiful angel. He will come to you and he will gift you enlightenment. 
That's the whole Luciferian movement. And there's this whole conspiracy theory, or maybe it's true. I don't know. Uh, the Statue of Liberty is actually I, Lucifer I believe that. <laughs> himself. I, believe that. I mean, you look at the Statue that. of Liberty, and it looks like it's a very handsome woman. I mean, look, come on, it's look very. Up, look he's up, bringing. <laughs> what, yeah. what is he bringing? Mm -hmm. Look up Statue of Liberty and <laughs> Lucifer painting side by side. So Mormons believe that there was uh, all of all of uh, yep. us were up in heaven with God, just as like spirits. Oh, look at that! Come on. So tell me that's not painting of Lucifer 1797 compared to the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, that's straight up. Uh, what's up, Lucifer? And um, but well, like a good Lucifer. Well, not like that's the cat Luciferians in believe Cinderella. that Lucifer is a very like he will come to you when you have earned enlightenment. Like it's a very profound visitation. Like it's and it's that probably comes back like the, to most, the language thing. It's the biggest revelation you could have if you're a Luciferian, right? Be Luciferian, like you're worshiping the devil. They don't believe that Lucifer is the devil. They believe mm. Lucifer is like liberty. It's yeah. you're liberated from your beliefs from before. Some people that, believe yeah. that the that Lucifer being represented as the North Star led the three yeah. kings to Jesus. Interesting. Well, the amount of like history that I've read up on the Catholic Church. I think that should be a course that every kid in high school has to take because it changes our understanding of things so much. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the the histories that we have, which is not a lot, but we're, we're uncovering more and more, what we have right now as the Catholic Church is not what it was, definitely didn't exist when Jesus was alive, but then what the organization that was created had nothing to do with the churches that were created or the gatherings that were worshiping Christ, right? Well, you got to think like ritual. I mean, you cut you no, it's like I was about to say something really out of pocket. So go ahead. Oh, said, you should say it before you forget. Uh, I said I think that the Catholic Church is the number one reason that the world is in the state of existence that it is in a negative light. Yes. I yes. I can't argue with you too much. The amount of pain and suffering that's been caused by people using christ's name in a horrific demonic way i think we have enough uh evidence of that just look at south america and spain like come on that there was a gentleman spanish inquisition yeah the spanish yeah. well yeah well, the spanish it wasn't inquisition. Just them. there was a lot of them yeah uh but if you scroll down on the instagram there's a yep. uh, to our podcast that we shame. did on uh father amorth he was the the chief ev uh, exorcist there's like an old italian looking guy with glasses thumbnail you'll see it eventually um but he was the chief exorcist of the vatican right and That's he cool. was the number one person that was saying he was under fire because he said that the devil was inside of the vatican the chief exorcist of the Vatican said that the devil was inside the Catholic Church, and it ex he lives inside the Catholic That's Church. That's him up there. If you go back up, he's on the left. Left, yeah, Father Amorth. Yeah, so he was he was one of the most famous exorcists in history, um, and he very much said that he believed that the devil has infiltrated the Catholic Church. He's the responsible one for making corrupting people and making because the Catholic Church is like. You know, to him was one of the is is pure, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, he and believed that they. Then he had the enlightenment and realized, oh, it's not so black and white. I mean, there's this is a I guy that you're not alone on your theories. Reddit's got threads and threads and threads on this. Oh yeah, like so if you look Which at the theory? history, <laughs> the Catholic Church being bad. <laughs> so like Mormons that believe that they were like uh, the truth got brought to the earth first through Adam. He was the first prophet. Mm -hmm. And then there was an apostasy. The truth was no longer on the earth. And then God brought it back through another prophet and then it was lost. And so it's the whole, there's multiple uh, dispensations as they say. Mm -hmm. And the time after Christ died was supposed to be, it's the great apostasy. And if there's a book uh, by that title, the great apostasy, um, it details the, pretty much the history of when the church got created, the Catholic church, all the different popes. We're talking about like brothers killing each other so they can become pope. And it like it, it's on and on and on and on of just s tons of bloodshed, um, tons. I mean, we're talking about murdering, mass murders all over the place in the name of God. And so when you, and we kind of touched on this earlier, some people, um, you were talking specifically about ghosts, but some people who's who were raised Catholic, they won't even look listen to it they'll see something that just doesn't make sense but they're like nope this is my belief this is my ideology they're living a black and light life unfortunately like a lot of religion it's like when you die you go straight to heaven or you go straight to hell there's no in between and mm -hmm. i think reality is far more complex than that like you said there's all these different colors out there it's not just black and white 
Yeah, it's like uh, looking. I always use the I always use the the analogy of looking through a faceted gemstone. If you hold a faceted gemstone up to the light and you look through it through one cut, it's going to come in one way, and then you turn it and it's another way, and another way, and another way. There's so many different ways to look at it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and like we were saying earlier, the the ultimate truth I think is that there is no truth, if that makes sense. To me, at least, that there is no way to put your thumb on it because truths are objective. At the end of the day, truth is objective. Truth cannot be, in my, at least the way I perceive it, cannot be up for interpretation. There are ultimate truths, and there are ultimate not truths. Uh, so yeah, so the the real truth is there is no truth to it because it's so beyond comprehension. It's a, yeah. it's a singular. I think, yeah, I think God Himself or herself or whatever is beyond comprehension. Beyond comprehension. You know, you said earlier that maybe we are God, and I've actually said that on the show multiple times, not in a sense of like, I'm Jesus, I'm back, baby, but yep. like a, right. we have a, a connection to what was meant throughout the these millennia that people are trying to s- describe this enlightenment and that, you know, maybe heaven is here on earth. It's our choice to live it. And you were talking about angels and demons maybe we are the angels and demons and we project what we that's do in our lives. A lot and of Elohim, the Elohim. That's what the, the Jewish call Yeah, them. the original yeah. Um, creatures that floated over the water and created matter. I told you I would remember it randomly. Oh, they called it Elohim? Elohim, the, yeah. The Elohim. Okay, because I um, think that's what I think they Mormons floated, call like They floated God the over Father, the water. Gods, yeah. They floated over the water and they created the land. And okay. Then, at, at some point, they they figured that uh, okay, there's like thought forms out here, and this thing that we've created, we want them to turn into something. So, um, they just like vibrated or spoke. Like you said, language is important. They spoke these things into existence. These beings, and these beings created life, and eventually we evolved, and it developed a tail because they wanted these things to be grounded to the earth. They always say, we need Mm. to ground, we need to ground ourselves, right? The Kundalini, the spine and in Gnosticism and and that kind of study, it's like, if you become a demon, what do demons have? They have a tail. They're on this earth. If you're an angel, you have wings. You're not of this earth. So Mm. if you look at like even the statue of Baphomet or, or, or Hermes Trimagestus, there's the caduceus in his lap. There's two snakes. Moses, snakes, Mm -hmm. serpents are critical to, to myths and legends and religions. This serpent is in your spine and it can either go to your genitals where, you know, you're only thinking like on this earth, like what can I do? Sex, money, possessions, lust, greed, bad things. Or I can spend time with my hands and create a beautiful heaven on earth for me and my family and my community here. So you can create a beautiful landscape or you can create a hellish one, which both of those things exist, but it's up to you how you want to live your life. And if you think about it just on this plane, right? No matter what happens after we die, it's probably a good thing that we're all trying to raise our vibration. Vibration. Mm -hmm. We're trying to become better people so we can be nicer to each other. So we can create better children, right? We want our children to be smarter, better, not make the same mistakes that we did. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing, no matter how you cut it up. What happens after we die and where we came from, we're still trying to figure that out. Maybe one day when we can time travel, it'll finally be, like you said, an objective truth. Boom, this is what happened. And I want to go back to a comment you made and maybe push back or maybe do a different perspective of it. You were talking about the caduceus where, you know, you got your genitals where you have sex, you have drugs, you have, you know, the hedonistic style. And you said bad things. And I'm like... Are those things inherently bad or is it just a counterbalance? So like the the difference between the way I was raised and say you would like Eastern is it's not good and bad. It's just one side of a different spectrum. Right. And I think that that's such a healthy way to view things. Kind of like the Luciferians, they don't see Satan as this like innately evil thing it's just a yeah. duality it's a connection it's a, a different way of looking and at i don't things. agree with you that it's not so black and white i guess in a, uh, a theology or the, a theistic sense that's kind of how it's defined it's like yeah lust, and bad, i think that comes bad. back to the catholic church being <laughs> masturbation bad like i think sexual expression is amazing i think i don't think it's a sin i think that people should express themselves sexually in a healthy way that doesn't harm other people right everything mm-hmm. should be consensual obviously but obviously there's an extremely dark side to that there's 
sexual crimes, there's assault, there's horrible things, right, mm -hmm. that we are all capable of. Mm. And I, I, I've said it on this show too many times, but I'm going to keep saying it because it's the only thing, until I find another thing that's more true than this, there's no, like, one concept that you can truly hold to without kind of skewing your mindset. And the only one that I can think of is balance. Balance is the one thing that every time I come back to, whether we're talking about religion or politics or whatever it is, you, you cannot grasp to one thing because at that point you're going to be falling over. You have to be able to see all sides. And that's funny because when he brought up Baphomet, that's literally what Baphomet is like representative to. So what's Baphomet? Uh, you want to, uh, Baphomet is the sabbatic goat that's representative to Luciferianism. Uh, actually, what well, the temple of s Satan? I wouldn't say Luciferianism. It's more Luciferianism well, is its whole different. Yeah, yeah well, the, 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 so the, the, the temple of Satan. Or Gnostic idol Baphomet. Yes, okay. the, the temple of Satan uses it heavily, and temple of Satan is the one. I, have, did you see the news where like they were trying to put up the the Baphomet statue? in front of like the Kansas City that's the satanic temple right satanic which temple which is than, correct satanic yeah. temple is an idealistic th 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 it's a <laughs> joking it's a hey Christians we're going to use your own beliefs against you exactly yeah. right it's, um, it's the balance that we're talking about exactly uh, satanic church on the other hand yeah different completely different beast they actually worship the evil side of satanic church is wild yeah yes um but baphomet is like literally just the balance of the universe the the divine yeah. feminine the masculine the the good eliphas the levy was an occultist yeah. and he invented it to basically um deliver his his theology his his philosophy um it was never meant to become this uh feared symbol of like satan himself it was all of these ideas just kind of mishmashed and really? thrown together yeah, yeah that's so why if you when scroll would, up when he's got he alive when did he come off up his levy that? in 19th century 1800s oh, 1800s 1800s yeah. it's yeah. got breasts so it, it, you it's know even in the bible they 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 discuss the um, as above so below so people just listening it's got like what is that a goat head with giant horns yeah the oh, the, yeah. the pentacle which is re pentacle. representative of the fi the earth wind water fire and spirit but and it's not upside down that'd like, be a pent alpha which is a mockery of the earthly oh that's one thing like anti mormons they give a uh, the Salt Lake City Temple, they have a bunch of upside down stars, but the church says that they're not upside down, they're just tilted to the side. Tilted to the side. I don't know what the difference now, is. Now, this would but... be if you take that top point and completely invert it. Okay. That would be a pent alpha. Uh, and if you actually look at the, the high sigil of black magic, if you want to pull that up, um, that's what like Church of Satan. You stuff. see the, you the, the staff the and the serpent, right? That's, yeah. that's in the legend of Moses or the, you know, the... The religion, and you got the two different the uh, sun and the moon. On so yeah, that is cool. Uh, the duality, um, yeah. the dark and do the, the light, do right? the satanic high sigil of black magic. Sorry. Uh, There's the sigil of Lucifer on like it. right here, like this uh, Lilith ceremonial one. It, it looks uh, bottom second row, far left, second row, far left. Very similar to that, right? I don't know why it won't show. Uh, one more over. It was, uh, Go back one, and then to the very far left. Oh, those are <laughs> the demon, <laughs> demon sigils. Very uh, far left, right? There. Yeah, that one. So it's very similar to that, right? So like, you see how how inverted it is. This is not the satanic sigil of high, of of of, high, of black magic, right? But this is the sigil. What is that? Lilith, right? Demon sigil. Yeah, that's totally um, a vagina. Yeah, it is because she's the. Yeah, I guess she, labia. Sorry, labia is. Yeah, sorry, but uh, oh, there, there it is. I can get my ad this one me better. This one right here, second row, second row, two over. Yeah, that one. Mm hmm. Yeah, like that's literally like the the pent alpha, the sat satanic pent alpha, but it's like quite so literally with inverted. the horns and it's all in, that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I mean, cool as in like well the 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 sad thing or I guess what I like about my current mindset is this is a lot of really good information that's super fascinating. It's very pertinent to like just any metaphysical belief that anyone has it's it is pertinent because you have to see the full picture to truly understand your own beliefs but there are people who would refuse to even have this conversation with us yeah and i think that if That's you the more you study the more things are unveiled and it's like okay this is what mm -hmm. they actually believe it's not this horrifically evil thing i mean you look at this thing this was just a symbolism to help teach students of the occult back in like this late 17 early 1800s like paganism i yeah. used to think that paganism was synonymous with like evil yeah. now i'm like oh no paganism if i had to choose one thing it was kind of you know they had it right back in the day just right have it a worked good time for them get back to work it worked for them at the time mm -hmm. um which i mean the catholic church was they took 
the Christian beliefs and jam-packed it with their paganistic beliefs, and that's how we get the church we have today. Mm-hmm. And for me too, like we were talking about all this like Luciferianism, Satanism, right? Uh, occult stuff. Like I personally, like you said that there's no like true, like defiantly evil. I personally, like the Church of Satan, I think is straight up bad, evil, 1000%. Uh, uh, that's one where honestly, you just jogged my memory. I hadn't thought of this in years. Church of Satan's bad. <laughs> they had a Church of Satan in this uh, small little area I was in Brazil was up Mm -hmm. on this hill and then down at the bottom of the hill there's a kind of an alleyway and you can walk through that alleyway to cut off like a you know 20 minute walk so one day we're walking by and both of us just stopped and we looked at each other and we're like are you feeling like this insanely oppressive like just dark feeling and he's like yeah i do not want to keep walking and we looked down and there was a trash bag that had been ripped open there was like a goat skull like with a little bit of flesh on it just coming out of the bag Mm -hmm. and we went and told someone and they said yeah never go walk down that alley again because at the top of that hill that's the church of Satan. because they do do blood ritual and summoning got the chills yes they do i completely forgot about that i get chills too thinking about it because yeah for me like they are evil and they i believe it now they (laughs) they 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 have influenced a lot of people to do bad things because there's a mm. book that I, you should everybody should read in my opinion called Demonic Foes by Dr. Richard Gallagher. It is one of the most convincing books books of demonic influence I've ever read in my life. I'm not much of a reader, so I can't say that my uh, my bag is full of books, right? But it talks about a, a, a Cornell psycho- psychologist that was like top of the top of the ladder for uh, uh, medical study for uh, psychiatry. Sorry. And uh, he teams up uh, incidentally with a Vatican-approved exorcist, and he becomes a psychiatrist that does mental evaluations on people claiming to suffer from demonic possession. 25 years as a psychiatrist investigating possessions, diabolic attacks, and the paranormal. In the book, in the book, there is a chapter called Julia the Satanic Queen. Okay. Now, these are all real stories. These are, I mean, think about this. This guy is a MD. He is risking his entire medical license, his practice, his life as a doctor writing this book, okay? And he has very credible friends who have backed him up on this, right? She admitted to being in a satanic cult, a real one that mimicked Church of Satan ideologies, where she was the breeder for the cult. Hmm. They had a cult member that was a physician's assistant that knew how to do abortions. This is going down a dark path. Yeah, this, so is, you're listening. this is about to get graphic, if that's okay. Not safe for work. Um, and she was the breeder. She would become pregnant. They would abort the fetus, and that they would do fetal sacrifice ritual on the altar to the devil in this cult. Oh, and that she was possessed by multiple demons, and that she was coming to him because she wanted to maintain her uh, position as a high queen of this cult, but she just didn't like that she was possessed. And she would get assaulted and all these different things. She was able to tell uh, the other priest of... Uh, actually, his name was Father A, not Father Amor, in the book. Uh, Father Jacques was the main priest. Um, you know, like where he was, what he was doing, what he was wearing, all these different things. But yeah, so that's the kind of things that like these deep satanic, like, far right extremist cults do and they're influenced by I guess Anton LaVey. Me, like we can read these books. I've never personally experienced uh, an exorcism. I haven't had that privilege. Uh, the way I approach a lot of these things, especially with the paranormal in our videos, right, is experience to me is better than belief. Belief yeah. belief is just believing something without any kind of factual basis, which I don't think us as logical human beings should do all the time. Is it useful? In some cases, yes. Um, if I saw a demonic possession and I witnessed these things myself, I think that's better than reading it through a book. Hmm. You can look at it through religion and all that too. And I'm not saying that this book is absolutely not worth its weight. You know what I mean? But uh, I guess for us, going back to our videos and like the way w- we wanted to present paranormal evidence to people, because a lot of people don't believe in it. And yeah. We, we would have these experiences and we would tell people and the first thing like so you were sober right like yeah yes we were <laughs> and they were like well i don't believe you i'm like cool i'm like let's start documenting this stuff so we started documenting it and we play it back and people are like uh okay now it's, it's fake it has to be fake and then then we bring people sometimes and they're just like that, that was insane like my entire i brought people on a on little ghost hunts and things like that and something happens to them and they're like okay it's real mm-hmm. first time mm-hmm. Like first time something touched me, I got grabbed, 
Like I heard a voice. Um, I felt the tingles, something brushed up against me. Like they, they become believers relatively quick. I mean, it's, it's a haunted location and it's active. People's minds begin to change very quickly. So for me, experience is always better than belief. And maybe one day I'll experience, you know, a demonic possession or I'll experience to see it, to be honest with you. I'm not sure an exorcism. Right. But I'm me personally, I'm hard pressed to believe that all exorcisms are demonic as opposed to mental health crises. Well, that was what his job was, which is the interesting right. part. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. So read the book. Read the book. But I would want to experience like a legit. I don't know if we could get with the an, 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 a Vatican approved exorcist and go out with him one day. You know, <laughs> that'd be something. Yeah. yeah, you could look up someone from the Satanic Church and be like, "Hey, well, what's up, buddy? That's uh, I, I we had an idea. Uh, I pitched it to Brian. Uh, we never followed through for it with it, but it was uh, it was going to be called Inside the Mind, which was like a little documentary, like sitting down and talking with people of different faiths and ideologies. And that's a uh, cool idea. Um, I actually messaged the Church of Satan to see if they would like have someone like sit down with us, but they never they never got back to my email. So Rachel, put that on our list. We're gonna get some Satanists in here. Sorry, Trey. Actually, I actually know someone. No way. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. Yeah. She, I'm not gonna say her name on here, but she is like like Church of Satan Satanist. Yes. Oh, right on. Very is she nice. cool? She's she's actually really cool. Nice. I'm sure she is. I'm just mm-hmm. saying it's just like the, the, some dark stuff like Church is of she Satan a breeder? Satanist. That's just no, not a that's a bad joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, that was that one specific <laughs> instance in this book, okay? Yeah. She has seen like rituals, like blood rituals though. Wow. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, Yorktown uh, has that skull in the basement of it that's We actually a, that's interesting. We uh, we didn't document that, but there was this yeah, they they have this pig skull hewn of wood, which is I don't think you can hmm. pull it up online, it's but it's in place. Yorktown Memorial Hospital, which is a place we've investigated and uh, we caught EVPs of a pig oinking. EVP electronic voice phenomenon. So you you okay. you record waveforms through a compressed device, you know, a microphone, and you play it back, and you hear something that you didn't audibly hear while you were there. And we heard a pig oinking, and it was just so bizarre. And there was a carved wooden skull of a pig. When, yes. when he say he, uh, when he says oinking, by the way, he's being generous. It was like this like animalistic like growling. Oh noise yeah, it was it was. Okay. I guess so you would describe it as demonic. Yeah, like no. like grunting, grunting, oinking. Like it was weird. Why do they have a carved skull in the basement? You know that story. I do, I do, I do know the story. I uh, tried so to buy it off him. We tried I, to make an offer. We're like, we'll take it off you. <laughs> 500 bucks. I offered the guy 500 bucks. Satanic school? We, that was his offer? I offered him $500. No. And he said no. He said no. He just um, wants it down there. All right, so. I think it's responsible for a lot. I mean, you approach it and you're like, no. Yeah, you feel no. it. Like when you approach that trash bag hewn of, of goat blood and mm-hmm. bits, you're just like, absolutely not. Like, I don't know what the heck they did with that thing. But you just around certain things, you're like, no, the, I'm out. The caretaker, Eddie, um, and his wife, Stephanie, um, Eddie was down. He does all the walkthroughs and stuff. And uh, so he had to start locking the doors because of this, right? He's, uh, <laughs> and it was, this was after I had visited by myself uh, in 2021. I went by myself with my dog, Lucy. And then at this time, it was not in there. This was after that. So it was in between 21 and 21 to 2024, sometime in between there. But some kids, or he says kids, but some people broke into Yorktown, went into the basement, and killed a raccoon and disemboweled it. When he And made sigils of some sort of what he says was a demon. He said he wasn't sure what it was. Um, but anyways, they, they broke the ribs open, like Blood Eagle style. Um, oh they, like, took the head off. They put it in the middle of this thing. They carved the head of the pig, and they put it on a pillow in, in the middle of the sigil with the candles and everything. And that's what he found when he walked into the basement of Yorktown the next day. He found this scene of demonic, satanic worship in the basement. So he kept the skull, but he cleaned up the mess. And he just said that he kept the skull because he felt like it now belonged to the hospital. He's now possessed by the demon they called. And now he runs the hospital. Because well, Yorktown does, in my opinion, have some sort I don't know what to call it. A you got demon. scratched there. I did. I literally saw three scratches. Also on my Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I think it was on your left shoulder. Uh appear in front of my very eyes as I recorded it in real time. Wait, it appeared as you were looking at him? You're like, you you said your shoulder hurt. Right? Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, so he took off his shirt, and we literally see these three red scratches just start to form. And we had been filming the entire time. We had just uh, 
there was a couple that was with us. It was their first time ghost hunting and they really didn't like it because it was a bit too Dude, real for them. So they left. They wanted it. The moment realized they didn't really want the it, moment huh? they left, he got scratched. So maybe they could focus on us more or maybe their energy of being apprehensive, like was kind of creating some if kind of barrier. It, they can't get you. They believed it when they left and that's why they left. <laughs> I think they go after me because I'm the biggest person. I think it's like, uh, if they can get after me. Then they can get after anybody else. I, I spoke with a gentleman. The strongest belief. You know, they, they, well, well, that's what Dr. Gallagher writes about too. In his book, he says that, uh, people that would be assaulted by uh, a little bit more. That's, that's Brian in another house. We can talk I got about like that a, in a second. A chemical burn. <laughs> that, one. that one right there. So you saw like this w happening or, as it was happening. He said his shoulder hurt and I'm like, well, I'll take your shirt off. And then I look and I'm like, oh, there's nothing. I'm like, wait, there is something. So I'm just going to say this. Had that's not, actually in the video. If you watch that episode, he's like, oh, it hurts. And then we turn the camera on. And then all of a sudden there's a scratch on him and it's becoming more and more profound and then it gradually fades away. So I would immediately write this off if y'all just making this stuff up if you guys weren't here like talking to me right now. Oh, for sure. I don't blame like, you. Because like I... Absolutely. We've had a conversation. You're all very reasonable people. Thank you. It's not a, you know, like, oh, you know, someone came and told me to... You know, yeah, you, you yeah, seem yeah. not mentally fucked yeah we're not crazy yeah Yeah. and um you don't seem like people that would just make it up for making it up sake either Mm -mm. i I think there are people out there who are just straight up charlatans one thousand um and they're trying to push an agenda um oh yes i you act actively seen it happen as you're going to do that is insane to me i like you stopped getting scratched after uh we uh met um mallory mallory and she uh that's true so a lot of a lot of mediums, a lot of people that are into metaphysics and that kind of like spiritual. Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah, look at this was in my house in Oklahoma City. Go right one more. Oh yeah, that's when your house was. Uh, yeah, that's when stuff. my house was haunted. I had a bad spirit in my house. That was a deep scratch. And too. if you would like to it's compare like the blood. the 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 marks, the 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 back marks, right, and my back of my look at all right. So I want to show you something real quick, just for a confirmation. Look at the back of my head, right. Mm-hmm. Right. That doesn't exist is what I'm trying to say is that I do not have red psoriasis or anything on the back of my neck. And we can just confirm that by looking at my yeah. head, right? Okay, good. So, yeah, we were looking at a, some various photos of just random, not random, but scratch marks on different parts of his body, some on the neck, some on the back. And these always occur like when uh-huh. you're in a place it's that has history of paranormal activity yeah not always um it's more like negative hauntings where these things happen things follow uh, me from hill house yeah. excuse me <coughs> uh, you will feel pain when it happens uh, i've never been scratched per se <coughs> excuse me yeah that was a good but one i got too. like a kidney punch once that really freaking hurt <laughs> really yeah i was uh it was <laughs> i don't know if we have uh footage of that <laughs> but i was really like i'm like ow, ow, ow. i was like something stabbed me <laughs> it was awful that was my buddy's house. His daughter said that uh, she had an imaginary friend, and he t- called me, texted me, and said, "Hey, bro, uh, I just found this on my couch, and I think it was my kid, though. What do you think?" He Probably. sent me that. Pi- Abs- dude, no fucking way that that was his daughter. She's like four. I put my hand next to it. I should have taken a picture, dude, but it's yeah, like the size comparison. of my hand. Oh, it's like giant. It's like, giant. It's hard to tell the size of that. I'm yeah. like, yeah, like, I mean, that's a that's a same. couch cushion. I mean, like, well, like, is the palm the size of the kid's hand? Uh, or like a human hand? No, they could, they, it's, they, it's they, slightly like, larger than a their... four-year-old hand. But here's my thing. Here's my thing. And, and this could very much be, like you said, it could be the four-year-old's hand. But like the symmetry of it is quite interesting that it looks like, maybe it's just, you know, just ink blotting yeah. like a psychiatrist. It looks like, it literally looks like a claw. It looks insane. Well, not well not I agree that, with you there. This is clearly microfiber. So if they're going to drag for the claw lines, you're going to see that drag down the fiber cut it, and you don't see that. Yes. And he couldn't wipe it off either, which was a weird part. Oh, he tried to weird. he tried to like wipe it away, and it wouldn't wipe away. So it was like a ink or a stain or it's something. It's like it was stained into the couch. Huh. Yeah. I, yeah. Burn that couch. This was years ago. This was I don't know what years. I don't even know what year that is. Two thousand and two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I was still in Oklahoma. Yeah. I've. Uh, yeah. That's a. Uh, there's so many remember when i told you that we've had just so many crazy fucking experiences that we don't even know what to think anymore this Mm -hmm. is just a living like like this is the earliest part of our instagram right when i was the one only running it right before brian came on board but um 
Yeah. So there's just so many freaking mind boggling experiences that you don't even know what to think anymore. So you just shrug your shoulders and you just go, okay, you know, like, yeah. And that's why I choose not to believe. Cause then they can't fuck with me. You're asking earlier about, um, triaxial magnetic field. Meter. Yeah. Measurable okay. things. Right. Okay. That's so pretty high reading. 281 milligauss. So the, we took this outside. So this is in Hill house. And that's this, measuring, uh, just the magnetic field environmental readings within okay. like a, th this is, so that's a triaxial, right? So what a lot of people don't know, and I will be the first one to tell you that they, you'll have a lot of pair of people, paranormal people that come in and, and think they know what they're talking about regarding, um, equipment right mm -hmm. but there'll be the same people that walk into a into a haunted house with a k2 meter which is like the worst electromagnetic field reader like in existence most electromagnetic field readers that are built for the paranormal which you should never buy one of those the read bags. on the x-axis that's okay. it the only the, they'll only detect in front of you like this so you have to go side to side this is going to detect within like a six foot radius in a complete 360 degree sphere around uh the device right so it's much more accurate and reliable and it's made for electricians okay so we were at hill house and there's i'm standing upstairs in a spot to where they say that a portal opens up huh. in the house like it consistently people will witness a portal opening up in that specific well i have spot. witnessed the portal open up because i've seen a flash of light appear in that house twice in at that location? Not at that location, okay. but I've seen it in another room. Like a portal was opening up, and I could talk about that yeah, if you want. But that that's a common experience. Yeah. Is just see, it's like somebody took your picture. You're like, what the heck was that? Like bright. Yeah, like hmm. blinding light. Like all of a sudden, Pew. lightning inside of a space inside of a house. Yeah, very bizarre. But 281 milligauss, for example, I took it out to the street, and I'm tall enough to where I can kind of stick my hand near the where the main vein power line runs into the house. Mm -hmm. 90 uh it was like 99.8 milligals so right next to the high voltage power line it was 99 and you're inside a room not close to any like I, i'm looking at the picture right now you're your feet away from the nearest thing and it's 281 correct and there was another reading of 277 uh maybe uh, what's the disparity of dates between that october 14th and what was the other one Oh, so those are different uh, visits there? Okay, so those are I posted those on the same day, I guess. No, okay. September 30th, there's another one. So you're having you're having reasonably similar EMF readings in the house mo a month apart, 2 weeks apart. Hmm. And, and these typically are, what the reading in that room is normal. Not, yeah. It's normal. It's completely normal. 0 0.05. So what would be like what would be someone who a skeptic saying that's not true. This is what it could be. They're like, going to say it's a power. They're going to say it's a wire. Like bad wiring. But in that's the wall. why I gave you the example. I mm -hmm. went out it to the street. It could be phone. And it, it could be electricity. Well, maybe the high voltage line is still sheathed where maybe they have an exposed wire in a wall or something. I'm just. But you see random fair. fluctuations of that energy and then at baselines. Uh, where did that radiation come from? It, it, we're not saying that this was 100% a portal. Oh, it's not consistent at all times. No, in that it, like, it raises up. <laughs> A paranormal thing happens and then it goes back down. Yeah, and then it'll read normal the next time. Like you go back there, if you were to go back there this very second. The energy and is oftentimes associated with paranormal activity. Yeah. Like if you can get lucky enough to document, like, okay, let's say you heard something or something moved or you saw something, you'll see a spike in electromagnetic energy and then the activity stops and then it's baselined again. Hmm. Why is there energy associated with paranormal activity? And how? How can we, con why are we consistently documenting these things? I mean, mm -hmm. Nikola Tesla believed that like he would uh, sit in a cage and he would have energy shot into him through his Tesla coil because he believed that electromagnetic energy is what brought you closer to God. Mm. And it's interesting that when we go ghost hunting, we see interference in the electromagnetic field and then paranormal activity, things that are unexplainable happen. It's like energy is correlated. <laughs> Nikola Tesla actually invented unironically the first spirit box by accident. What's a spirit box? Spirit box is a, uh, so in today's day and age, is a AM, FM radio that sweeps uh, the radio stations every uh, 100 milliseconds, 150, 200, 250, 300, or 350 millisecond intervals. And in that white noise, it is believed that spirits can communicate through radio frequency, that they can tap into it. Or in Tesla's case, that they believe that the electromagnetic field picks up these voices and they exist there anyways. Hmm. There's a video, and I, maybe she's clicked on it. There's a video of you can hear and listen to what actually sounds like voices coming through the static field of his. Uh... But yeah, it's interesting. There yeah, it is. Yeah. 
famous quote that he has, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, thinks in terms of uh, energy, frequency, and vibration, right? Um, it maybe, it's not, bit. maybe it's not this video, but... He was fascinated in numbers, and uh, they thought he was an occultist, and he was aligned with the devil and all that, but he was just brilliant. These numbers weren't mm, this is more... Um, search a... Uh, it's like it's like a spirit speaker or like Tesla sp Tesla spirit uh, speaker. I was just it's like literally this no like you can hear these voices talking. Maybe it's that spirit radio. <laughs> the spooky okay, spirit. Is this literally? Oh, this is probably somebody <laughs> that literally made one. Tesla. Okay, well, Tesla. well, case okay. in point, uh, yeah. he's the one who kind of realize this phenomenon where yeah. like hey, you're sweeping radio waves and there's voices coming through and they're intelligent and they're answering questions that I'm asking and we do this all the time in, in some of our videos well one of us will be completely separated from the room like uh, oh, in our last method, yeah. our last video um, the at the Bolton house it's a place in Jacksonville Texas and uh, the, the, the theory behind the haunting is they think it's like one of the original town owners that founded the town and he was a very religious and pious man and uh, he's the shadow man that's inhabiting this house because it was his house and it's his family's house. They think he's still there. And uh, an Estes method is basically you take a spirit box, you completely separate yourself from everyone else. You record the responses that you hear through this sweeping radio. And then somebody's asking questions on the other side of the house. And somehow that person asking questions is getting them answered and they're not talking to each other. So it's really? like, yeah, you're asking a question to the ether and all of a sudden your, your intention behind like, okay, I want you to talk to Brian and speak through Brian. All of a sudden I'm answering questions. He's really asking. good at it. And he, uh, he always gets the responses. Like we were, uh, well, it's funny. Cause I'll take the earplugs. Out. I'm like, well, that was a fucking waste of time. And he's like, no dude, you know what? Like, <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, that was insane. Like you answered everything. Like everything made sense. And I'm like, no way dude. Yeah. This, it's it's going to come out. Uh, like I said, we're backlogged a couple of months on videos. So, but when this one does come out, it's quite interesting because like the shadow man, right. Where uh, I'm walking around with a camera and I remember I'm sitting in, in one of the rooms and like you said, we're not here to fucking bullshit anybody. Like we're not here, out here trying to fool anybody. We're two guys with a camera that like ghost stuff that just want to document things. Right. So we're like, I'm beep booping around the house. I'm just like, I'm walking around and I just, the doorway, right. I just don't want to go through. And I'm like, I'm talking to myself on the camera, right. For the, for the video. And I'm like, I just really don't want to go through this door right now. He goes, he he's 25 feet away from me with his earbuds in fucking having the spirit yeah, box to blasting in his ear right and the whole he time like me. voices will come through and then i'll say the voice he, he goes get in there and i was like oh okay i will go in there he goes yeah go and i was like i will go and he can't hear me mind you and somebody is talking to so me so he's repeating what he's hearing through just a, random frequencies mm, a spirit is talking to me so i go in there i get i mean look at my arms i get chills yeah, just thinking of it living it i beefed with this spirit right this shadow man and uh, so I go in there and he goes, uh, I, you know, it's a little fuzzy because it's been a few months, right? But to my best of my knowledge, I go in there and I'm like looking, uh, my back is to the wall in the, in the servants' quarters because they used to have uh, house hands, if mm -hmm. you will, right? And uh, I'm in the servants' quarters and I'm looking down towards where he is down the hallway about, uh, at this point, I'm like 40 feet away from him. And he's like, back up. And I'm like, okay, shit, I don't know how much further I can go back, right? So I back my back up all the way to the wall. But mind you, where Brian is quite literally is a staircase. I felt like something was going to rush up on me. Like my brain said, move, because I was going to get pushed down the stairs. So I move forward, and I'm looking at the door that's now adjacent to me where your fridge is, right? And I'm pointing at it. I'm like, dude, something's in there. And he goes, I'm here. And I'll go, whoa, what the fuck? I said, and he goes, shadow man. I literally was talking about like the shadow man and like all this, this beefing spirit that I was having. And I point in that direction. As I point, he goes, I'm here. So I try to, when I say the voices, I try to say them exactly how they hear them. I don't so do it for dramatic effect. That's why I you try it. to like mimic the, as best as I can, you basically become, I don't want to say a vessel because that's no, kind of you're weird. absolutely a vessel. You're a conduit. You're a conduit, a conduit you're a medium. for spiritual to speak through you. And it's like uh, the whole time I took it off and I was pissed because I'm like, that was a waste of time. And he just had this whole experience where he got confronted and. Yeah, so we were beefing friend. hard. So you're listening to you put yourself, headphones, mm -hmm. and you're listening through those headphones. Is that something that you can record? And yes. Like play Ghost back? Adventures does. We haven't figured out how to do it. There's an APF processor. It's about $180. Oh, um, yeah. That thing. So you could play it back. Okay. Absolutely. So like you could hear through the thing. 
like I wonder if there's a way to do it live because like I we could come on and we could or you know off camera whatever you want to do we could try to do an Estes method and uh, we would probably have to go to a haunted location and probably be a little bit better. Um, yes. But Rachel's totally down haunted podcast. <laughs> I'm ru- I'm worried that I would ruin it because um, I honestly like I my belief at this moment is you. If you don't want it to, it's like being hypnotized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hypnot- they call that hypnotizing is real. I've seen yeah. some weird shit, the, but I yeah. I've tried multiple times. I just don't let myself do it, and I think it's because I I'm too addicted to control. You know, I'm like I'm like yeah. nope, I do not want to allow another sense. entity into my life. So, and I think that's why I don't experience any. Well, of these things. here's the thing: is when we go into these haunted spaces, we I guess. Um, and a lot of people call us necromancers and stuff. It's <laughs> I actually, I lean into it. It's funny. So our, funny. Our well, clothing I, line, I say, been... come join our cult. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just a joke, though. But we'll go into these places. We're like, hey, I'm Brian. This is Dylan. And we'll introduce ourselves. Like, we came here to speak with any spirits that are in this house. Please come speak with us. We're going to be respectful. We'll be nice. Um, we're just going to ask you questions. We're not going to bother you, banish you, cleanse the house. We're not mm-hmm. here to start a fight. But whoever is here, come talk to us. And it's usually we, we start recording. It's really boring for the first hour. It's like that message like goes into the ether and it takes time. Like they receive yeah. the envelope finally. Like, oh, they're trying to talk to us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like and the- gradually, like, usually it's how investigations go. There's like, there's like a Genesis where it's like, we introduce ourselves. It's like, okay, that was kind of weird. Okay, cool. And then it's like, wham, something happens. And then it calms down and then it'll just be waves and waves. Ebbing and waves. flows. Yeah. Hmm. And then at the end of the night, well, we actually sleep uh, in these locations. Always. We set up uh, mattresses. We'll try to document uh, anything that happens to us. Typically, we... We're just so fucking tired. Of doing we never... Typically, we get left alone, yeah. but it's a pretty cool bit. Um, and then in the morning, we say, thanks for speaking with us. We're going to go live our lives. You guys stay here. If you do follow us... Um, we'll exercise your asses. Basically, yeah. like, <laughs> it's basically, it's not a possibility. Like, if you follow us, like, it's this relationship ends here. And we will decide when to have that relationship with you again, hmm. if and when down the road. And if think if you open and close, it's like a ritual, right? Like you open the board and you close the board. You open the house and you close the house. You you close that page. You know, you turn the cover. And I've never really had a problem with an attachment. I never had a problem with things following me. Home. My house has never been upside down or haunted because I choose it not to be. Right, that's my willpower. That's my intention. We set our intentions when we do our investigation. Call it necromancy, call it witchcraft, call it what you will, but things happen. Yeah, and I think it's so important that we do do that uh, because you never know what you're gonna uncover when you do an investigation. For example, um, so our next video is Dollhouse, and okay, so the two videos from now we're gonna be releasing the uh, 1889 Protestant home. I can't remember the date. God bless, I'm so bad with dates. The The Protestant Protestant home for destitute children in San Antonio. Here in San Antonio, it's here in Kentucky, Kentucky Avenue. Okay. Uh, By the way, do not go visit this. This is a privately owned uh, resident. Do not show up, please, and thank you. Um, yeah, here it is. Protestant Home for Destitute Children. But be- we actually got a um, an Instagram short um, that pre- explains the story pretty dang well. Yeah, and so someone actually lives there. Yes, now? somebody does live there. Mm-hmm. It's their, it's their, their residential home. Yes, huh? it's like a it's like a yeah. private residence slash museum. They group. respect their privacy, so I'm not going to throw their names out there on the podcast. But. Yeah, but what I was saying, like, thank God, you know, I'm glad that we do open ourselves up the way that we do because there's a story here about very uh, abuse, a very dark story of abuse and mistreatment of children in here um, that we uncovered a story we believe of a very 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 bad man that lived in this house that took care of these children that raped children um it's getting dark again yes Mm, um and we know this uh we feel we know this because like he said it started off really slow and all of a sudden i started to get affected to where i was getting fucking pissed like really 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 bad to the point where I wasn't going to, I was in control of myself. I was not going to lash out, right? But I just felt just enraged, right? And I was telling him about it. And we, he pulls out his uh, phone app and people are like, oh, God, phone apps. Phone apps have the same validity as all, all the other theoretical devices that are out there, to, just to make a statement. Um, but anyway, so we pull out um, Vox by GhostTube. And very, very clearly... You hear a voice come through say, he'll rape you. Very clearly. It's disturbing. It's disturbing. And 
And we and weren't really asking. Qu- so if people want to think things are gags, right? Like, oh, it's just answering things that are relative to what you're saying. We were just saying, who is affecting him? What is going on? It was you like know? a warning. Yeah, who is here? And it was like a woman, I believe, saying it. It's yeah. like, he'll rape you. Yeah. Like, it was a- like yelling like, hey, like, watch out for this guy. You know what I mean? And Mallory, our psychic, was telling us, she did a sweep of the house, that there was a young boy that was rather tall and blonde hair, blue eyes. Hmm. Um, and I'm, we started to think that this spirit was being attracted to me, um, because shortly after, um, before it said he'll rape you, I didn't say anything out loud. Cause I usually don't until like, I feel it's time, if you will. Um, I just, I try, I try not to just feed things all the time. Like, Oh my God, I feel this or I see this or I hear this. Right. Like, but I was feeling like hands, like by my groin, like pressure by my groin. And, uh, then the he'll rape you thing comes over and I'm like, Gosh. so we're connecting the dots that, um, this character abused these children but the story of this of the haunting is that it was a light-hearted haunting yeah Mm. and that it was not a bad haunting it is absolutely a bad haunting in there so in that san antonio express news article you can actually go read for yourselves that there's actual um oral testimony that they took from i believe it was uh, they name her in there but her mom and her her mom's sister were in this orphanage and they recall saying that uh, a lot of the people there had no business taking care of children. They were mistreated Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. sometimes abused in a very sexual manner, especially when they were taken out out. of the orphanage on these outings for like, let's go get ice cream. Like it's some creepy old guy. Yeah. And unfortunately in our investigation, we got evidence that would validate what is being said in the San Antonio And this is a real news article. This isn't yeah, made yeah. up. And, and we didn't go in there with this, like, hey, this is what the news said, so we got to prove it. We were actually told by the people there that, like, you know, it's got a bad history, but, like, I really don't think it's anything that bad, but nobody has ever really stayed the night there and investigated. Ever, it. actually. We're and the first person. So this family that lives there, you just gain their trust and they let you spend the night? Basically. Yeah, we met this individual. Brian met this individual, and we just threw uh, the line out there and, you know, just went in friendly. Hey, can we meet with you? Can we talk with you? Uh, We'd really like to investigate this place. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now they have a rape house. But he wanted to know. (laughs) He wanted to know what was going on because he knew that his house was haunted because there was a tours that go and do... Uh, brief tours, three hour, four hour tours in the house, mm-hmm. uh, uh, ghost tours in the house, because uh, it is a very historic property in San Antonio, right? And uh, but yeah, he wanted to know what was going on. He thanked us for figuring that out. And what was even more interesting is not only the sexual abuse that we figured out. These spirits were telling me that this character would lock children in the closet. Uh, my wife was sitting on the couch, and my wife I, has a very interesting ability. It's more like an intuitive ability where she just feels like things are going to happen and then they do happen. She doesn't know what it's going to be. She just like has a feeling, right? And we were sitting on the couch, and Mallory had like told us that she feels like somebody was hiding in those closets. She used the words hiding. And I told Brian, I said, fuck it, dude. I said, open those closets. Because we started to get some really palpable, like angry energy we coming actually, from the, the in door. In that instance, after I opened um, the closet doors, probably the loudest and most clear that we've ever captured of audible footsteps. Oh yeah, it was approaching us like heavy, like boom, boom, boom. Someone when you're walking opening up that closet. Well, we open up the closet, and his wife freaks out, saying, "You shouldn't have done that." as if these these spirits were trapped in there and they're literally like free and now like this enforcer type negative spirit is coming up and we can physically hear it. I actually, I like get back, I'm like something's like about to like charge us and that happens with a lot of negative spirits is they'll, they'll you'll hear and you'll feel like something's gonna like rush through you or you're gonna be attacked. And mind you, Alice is not the ghost girl. She's, no, she's just actually very quite logical, a skeptic. skeptic, right? But she's more a believer now, but when she says things like that, it's very strange mm. because it's not of her personality type or her belief system to be saying those things. Well, I wanna set a time to where we go do something because that sounds- Let's do it, man. I, I would love to experience it for myself. Again, I, I, I'm superstitious in a way that like, you know, we go fishing and people don't catch fish i blame myself obviously it's ridiculous but <laughs> i i would feel bad if we went and then we had no experience because i i do well, believe that these things happen and i what you would have to do and what we would ask you is uh some people are nullifiers because they yeah, neutralizers they, neutralizers the nullifier neutralizer whatever you want to call it they come into the space and they kill all the energy there so you need to go in 
and somehow accept that these things could be a possibility. Your intention is like, this could happen. We could catch a fish tonight. If you just go into it and be like, we will catch a fish tonight, then most likely we will have activity. But if you're hesitant and you're scared, it can go both ways. They can mess with you more. You I know? call it ghost bait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ghost it, bait. you really yeah, don't know until yeah, you're real. there. I mean, I, I can't. You I'll can't quantify these you. things. I had a dude that was yeah, but it's like he was saying, yeah, it's good to to go in just open minded. Yeah, don't have well, to believe it. One Rachel way or another. definitely yeah, believes. Pony up, take the four hour drive. Let's go to Hill House. Let's just do it. Just I'm dive down. dive in I'm, head first. I'll, I'll spend the night. There. I haven't been let's there. In a while. Uh, we haven't been there in a while. I've been taking a break, man. You gotta let that place cool sometimes. It's been a while. It's been a few months. There. March. Should we do a overnight thing? Yeah, just just full tilt. Just go. Let's go. Hill I'm House. Done. Just just go hang out with Toby. Get t hear him talk. And but I've been Toby's there. Probably just I brought my brother once. He's probably a nice guy. I brought my brother once and nothing happened. He went to bed. Stuff started happening. So he was a nullifier that night. So he was a nullifier. That night he was. I brought him to other places and it was pretty active. But I have I have friends that are huge ghost believers. Uh, Martha Decker is one of them. She's a, she's a neutralizer. Huge ghost believer, but she's a neutralizer. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's not just people that don't believe in ghosts that are neutralizers. There's I know two people that are neutralizers that believe in ghosts. And I think it's all about you know frequency. Whether it's you know. You, who was it that talked about quantum physics? Maybe it is something that, like, if you have a just a little bit of a signal coming from our powerhouse of a brain that yeah. we have, whether you're intending to or not, maybe people just have that frequency or that energy that's going off of them. It just kind of messes up the transmission. Yeah. Um, like every time wave I talk, waveforms. Waveforms. Yeah. yeah. Do y'all believe in the hive mind? Meaning that we all influence each other to have similar experience now. Uh, just depending, just depending what happened, but like in places like that where things are very obvious, then they that it's just hive mind is impossible. In places where things like, do you feel that? And like, yeah, dude, I do feel that. That very much could be subjective association to what people are saying. You know what I mean? Or so subjective like influence. Um, yeah, so I do believe it in there. But when things are like, you know, you hear, you know. Boom! Someone hits the bangs on the wall, right? My wife will be the first one to tell you when we were at a tour uh, hosting a overnight at Hill House one night, and we were sitting in the living room, and she, this was like the first crazy thing that ever happened to her. We're sitting in the living room. She's a complete, utter skeptic, and it sounds like someone literally threw a bowling ball at the wall. Boom! And she, her eyes went open like this, and her mouth went open like this, and she just was speechless for like two minutes just because she could not believe it. Everybody heard it, right? So their hive mind... No. And this is where the person that does not believe in ghosts, right? Or didn't mm -hmm. believe in ghosts at the time. So it just depends. You know, some people have the belief that we're like antennas for stuff that's coming. So new ideas, new inventions, they come from out and like we receive them in. Mm. And that's maybe actually the entire concept of meditation itself. Meditation is the belief that you can gather resources, information, and knowledge that is completely outside of yourself and basically transceive that information and bring it to reality. That is what meditation is. It isn't to like, oh, let's calm down and lower our blood pressure. Like actual like meditation as it is written um, in a theological sense is to obtain information from outside of yourself. So maybe these locations where people experience haunting, see the same thing, hear the same noise, maybe that's kind of like a focal point of whatever us antennas receive maybe we're all in the spot and we all see the image or we all hear the sound or feel the thing explaining your scratches i don't know what the fuck that means so that i met a gentleman he, <laughs> he investigates cattle mutilations and he was a huge believer of energy and he's like just because you have a mark on your body he's you got to understand that he, he was a full believer that these things operate on an electromagnetic they have energy He's like, they touched you. Whether that is bad or good, it doesn't matter. There's an energy transfer on your skin. What is going to happen? It's going to turn red. So he's like, I'm really tired of everyone saying this was evil. I got scratched. I got attacked. It's like you literally just had an energy transfer on your skin, and you're associating that with it being negative. Whereas you, like, obviously, the the situation and everything, especially with, with Hill House, like, that can be seen as negative. But yeah. Does it always have to be that way? Maybe not. Um, I don't really get scratched that much. I know I've been hurt before. It doesn't feel good. When you get scratched, it doesn't feel good. Can you scroll down on my Instagram and see... Uh, 
I'm looking for a gentleman, a side profile picture of a gentleman with glasses on. I don't know if I ever shared this, who had numbers burned into his face by an angel. Oh, shit. If not, I'll find it on my Taking phone. Taking numerology to the next level. we got angelic numbers on our body now. Um, I'll find it on my phone and I'll show you. While you're looking for that, something you said kind of brought me back to a previous comment. When we had that brain up on the screen and we're talking about how it's the supercomputer and we have this, you know untold potential i've experienced very very painful things that weren't actually happening to my body it was the nervous system which you know it's all tied to the brain one one big uh, organism there so these scratches could very well be created by ourselves whether what it's causing it i don't know i've but heard that before i've heard that before yeah i don't think it's on there i'm pulling it up right now um but with the point of being is what brian exactly brian was saying is that is the dude that he had uh had met had said he was tired of hearing people say that it was always evil um i had a friend get burned on his face and we very much believe please tell me i can find it oh my goodness um that it was not of a dark spirit of it it was of a uh, spirit of light because these numbers um two one five seven five two one seven five i think were the numbers and it basically spelled out his entire life's existence with those four numbers with those four numbers so he has numerology these, is intense like. he has these numbers that appear on his face and so that's the the, the story oh, okay all this stuff is loading now thank god i wasn't loading at first so i was like freaking out um, it started off that he was sitting in the room. He had been wanting to go to Hill House for a very, very long time, but he was having problems with his wife, and his wife was a big believer. The parent almost said, you will not go to that house. So eventually his wife's like, whatever, fucking go. And this is, you know, he's been asking her to go like 10 different times that I go. His name was James Malloy. He was a tech sergeant on my flight. A uh, very, very good man. Um, and he finally was able to go so he comes down to the house and he was like he's like nothing's happening and i told him and he was like oh here it is um i told him to chill out and because he was talking shit to the house um i mean he very clearly see the two right and there's a very tiny five and then a seven seven and then a little five at the end yeah uh well the five is uh it's like it's like in the middle right here. It's it's in, in between the two and the one. You can see like the the top part of the five, okay. and then the small seven. Um, yeah. So, homie was like talking shit to the house, and I told him I said you need to be careful. I said you need to stop talking shit to Hill House, and he's like whatever. This is so stupid. I was like bro, listen. I was like just go by yourself in the house, and you, something will happen. I promise you. Just just go by yourself, right? They like to pick on people who are by themselves. So like there's power in numbers, right? He's like whatever, whatever. So. He goes, he sits in the, in the axe room where I sleep all the time and he's sitting on the chase lounge and he comes running out of the room. And I said, what's wrong, James? And he goes, he's white as a ghost. I literally thought he was going to come out of the room and go, g -g 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 ghost, you know, like one of those things. And he's like, I just heard something slam underneath the bed and I heard claws underneath. And I said, shut the fuck up. So I said, okay. So anyways, so when was the last time, okay, in, 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 a, in a haunted old house that somebody probably swept or cleaned underneath the dust underneath the bed? Probably rarely, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the house is clean, right? We go to the house all the time. It is clean. But when you clean it under the bed, you do that every few months or, you know, it's something like that. Like sure. most people, re realistically, right? So he tells us that there are claw mark sounds coming from the bed. And I was like, whatever, dude. So I go in there, look at that. And lo and behold, I go and take a picture underneath the bed. Oh, wow. And there are finger marks drawn in the dust. You've seen this picture, right? No, I have. Right? There's, there's little finger marks in like, like years worth of dust, right? And I'm like, oh my God. So I'm like, okay. So we sit down and we close the door and we're sitting on the couch. And um, he's like, oh, don't close the door. So I was like, okay. So I get up and I open the door. Right? So mind you, I open the door. There's a little light on by the staircase uh, from the kitchen that's seeping through, right? So if you're in Hill House, you're kind of by the staircase where the kitchen is. And so we're sitting there in the mostly dark, 99% dark, a little bit of light coming through. And then we just see the entire door just go black. <laughs> Just all the light disappears, and both of our heads simultaneously go down towards the towards the ground, like forcefully. It almost felt like, and whatever this thing was that came into the room felt like it was shifting space time. That's the best way that mm. I can describe it. That I wasn't looking at it, but I knew it was moving through the room because I could feel it moving through the room. It had like mass to it, and it moved from my right to my left, and. 
I remember vividly, we're looking down on the ground, both of us, and I was like, James, don't look at it. Whatever you do, don't look at it. And his dumb white ass, right? He, uh, what does he do on the camera? He, he looks up towards it, and it was almost like something fucking took its fingers and was like, do not look at me. Because his head starts shaking the other way, and then his glasses fly off of his face. No way. They you have off. this on video? On four, so, it, oh. Oh, so have you ever had anything just so fucking crazy happen to you that you're like, you're not even thinking about recording it, right? Mm-hmm. Or like, some, it was one of those moments. Well, you used right? to yeah, go yeah. for fun and, and exactly. you just have experiences. And it, it was when you and me came together. It's when we still, we need to document things. Yeah. So it was, it was one of those nights, right? So we weren't even thinking about recording this, right? So he grabs his face and he runs out of the room. And we're like, dude, I was like, dude, what the fuck? So we, we, I'm like, ah, right. I run out of the room and I, I, I'm just getting chills thinking about it. And anyway, so I take that picture. And I'm like, dude, there's something on your face. So we put holy water on her thinking that it was something bad. It doesn't do anything. Put holy oil on it because that was our remedy for evil things. Put holy water, holy oil on it, you know, good intentions, and then the marks will go away. It wouldn't go away. And we're like, what the fuck? And my buddy had an idea. He goes, he goes, those are numbers. He goes, look those up. And lo and behold, my friend Callista Nyquist Johnson, who was one of my other flight chiefs at the time, she was really big into angel numbers. So she pulls up 2175 or 2157, and uh, it literally, like, it talks about him being a heartless cynic and all these different things, and, like, he was having trouble with his wife. Anyways, we read this whole thing, and he starts crying in the middle of the kitchen because it literally describes everything that is going on in his life, financially, maritally, all these different things. And uh, my buddy Eric Brown, uh, he goes, dude, that was a fucking angel. And we had a REM pod on the stairs, uh, which is like an electromagnetic device with an antenna. And if you break the field, it'll go off. He said, that was a fucking angel. REM pod starts singing. It starts going off. So there's and, electromagnetic interference while there's paranormal activity happening. Right. It's like something was confirming, like, yes, it was an angel. And anyway, so we're like, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, this is like one of this is one of the most intense experiences I've ever had in my life. Sounds intense. And yeah. uh anywho, um, so he's like, dude, that was an angel. And we keep talking, right? We're going through this whole thing. It's a it's a whole long thing we're going through, right? And and Pedro, my buddy Pedro, he goes, uh, dude, that was fucking divine intervention. The REM pod goes off again. So, anyway, so we have this whole thing throughout the night, right? James has this crazy and eventually we believe that that angel stamped that in his face like an A for adultery so everybody could see it. So mm. he could not brush off that message from the gods. And what was interesting is that that night, we didn't know this until the next day, but he told us that his wife was going to leave him that night. She wrote in her prayer journal, God, please send someone to save James. I love him, but he is not the husband that I know, and he's not the man that I used to know. Please, something like that. Please send someone to help him. That was at like 1145, and this happened at like midnight. Wow. And uh, yeah, so, and after that, right, um, his life was instantly better. He was, uh, he, his, his marriage was fixed. His finances got fixed over the next couple of months. He started going back to church, all these different things. And what was interesting is I talked to him a couple of months later. And uh, all right, so think of a big Chevy uh, uh, 2500. We used to have uh, patrol trucks that are big 2500s. So they were at the front of the 2500. And then there's the tailgate. And me and Callista, uh, it was actually him, uh, James and Pedro, funny enough. And then me and Callista were at the tail of a Taurus. So two full car lengths away having our own separate conversations. And I cannot remember the number combination that he says, and I wish I did. But he said, he's like, for example, he was like, he goes, uh, 217. And I'm like, what? He goes, well, why did you just say that? And he's looking at me. He's hollering at me. He goes, Dylan, why'd you just say that? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? He's like, why did you just say that? And I'm like, I did not say it. He's like, I literally just heard a man's voice say those numbers. And I said, motherfucker, it wasn't me. Hmm. I said, you, something wrong with you? He goes, no, I'm fine. I was like, I literally heard that. Anyways, we looked up those numbers, and it was like uh, something along the lines of, you've made the right decision, and you, you should continue upon your path of enlightenment. And this was after he like once started going back to church and believing yeah. in God and all these different things. Numerology goes hard. Which wow. raises the question, Crazy shit. was math invented or was math discovered? Yeah, I don't know. On next week's episode. (laughs) (laughs) That's uh, because like you said, there's objective truths. Math is there's a solution. There is a truth to math. Wow, that's actually a really good point. Math is is an objective truth. Is math an extension of God? Or did we as human beings invent it? I think by, by by the word math we invented it, but the existence of like the truth of math, I think, has always been a thing. You know what I mean? Like the Fibonacci sequence, you know, like the perfection of everything. You know, math is always, is creation. Hmm. You know what I mean? That's how I think about it. What do you think? Deep. 
I'm not. Uh, I'm not smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, neither are we, right? But it's fun to fun to think about. Man, I I think that um, I really truly believe that any anything is possible, and yeah. I th- I think it comes down to what we need in our lives at the time mm. and where we actively want to go, and I I fully believe that we do have a lot of choice in this life. It's it's up to us whether we go hard on the weekends and pay for it during the weekdays. You're going to have a really cool experience that weekend, but then there's going to be a price to pay. Or we can live a very, you know, plain, peaceful life. And life's a roller coaster. If we want to experience those highs, we're also going to have to pay for those highs with the lows. And some people just want it right in the middle. And whether it's, you know, communing with demons or skydiving or riding a bull, all of that, I, I love the fact that humans can synergize and create together, but the fact that we're so like different as well, and we all mm. get to delve into these different realms that have so much fascination and so much knowledge that we can obtain. And the only way to, to do it is just do it exactly what we're doing, just talking, having conversations that are just honest and open. And like, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I believe in ghosts now, but... I've talked to you now for two hours. Well, heck, what is it's it? It's been a minute, two, yeah. Two and a half hours yeah. now. It's been fun, and though. Yeah, it has. I know y'all now. Like, I, I see your sincere people and that you truly do believe in it, and you're not just charlatans going out there making up noises and stuff. Mm. So I, I've i experienced things in my life that I could write off as mental illness. I could write off as just coincidence. Mm. I've, I used to lay my hands on people for healings because that's what we did as a missionary. And we had some miraculous events. And again, it could have just been a coincidence. It could be that there was a higher power. It could be that the Mormons are right and all y'all are going to hell. One of the, one of the three or there's, and they're probably all right in a lot of different senses. And I, I joke a lot, but at the end of the day, what real, really matters is what we're doing here is human connection. It's being able to like share these things with each other, have these enlightening moments where whether it's an out-of-body experience, whether you meditate, whether you have a brain accident or maybe you're doing psychedelics, whatever is allowing us to see each other for who we truly are and like act on that. That's the thing that really excites me. So when people ask me like, what do you believe? It's Same. like, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it other than that. The past old, two and a half hours might just begin to put a package on that i guess a bow yeah it's a, it's a, it's a long but that's not even you know yeah <laughs> you it's believe in aliens um yeah yeah i i've seen ufos before i've oh, seen one in the flesh yeah when i was stationed at italy i saw that's the only time i ever saw a flying saucer ufo hmm. it am- an incredibly um a flying like it just comical like it wouldn't be real like a flying saucer like the old school pictures Closed the gap of hundreds of miles, and it was a two-lane highway going into the mountains. Uh, I don't know how fast, hundreds of miles an hour, impossibly fast, and it stops, just instantly stops, floats in the middle of this two-lane highway that I'm staring at, and then just as fast as it came and it stopped, it went in another direction. And I was literally just like, you know, you're like, huh? And then my buddy next to me who was passenger is like, did you just see that? I'm like, what? He's like, a fucking flying saucer. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, I did. I did see it. Did you see it? He's like, yeah. Like, where did it go? I'm like, I don't know. It was insane, but it was real. We both saw it and there was no denying it. Like I'm getting goosebumps. Just, there was no denying it. It mm-hmm. was a flying saucer. It was a, U, what do they call them now? UAPs. 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 Ancient astronaut theorists would agree. <laughs> I, you know, um, I whatever it was, well, I saw it. And yeah. nothing can ever take that away from me. What is this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I found this earlier when y'all were talking about the Vatican, uh-huh. and there is absolutely stuff on the Vatican as well. Rumors suggest Rumors. that the Vatican holds proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life in the form of extraterrestrial skulls. Some sources say the archives contain proof that the Pope is conspiring extraterrestrial beings to implant everyone on Earth with computer chips. <laughs> that was a little crazy. Well, like, like Alex Jones, like, I'm, I'm good. The, the government's doing... Nothing you're coming, and uh, they're, they're going to get you. They're doing psychedelics when trying to communicate with the extraterrestrials. Pizzagate. Yep. Man, that guy, uh, he flew too close to the sun. Yeah. I think it is, he is the funniest motherfucker to listen to, though. He I is hilarious. so entertaining. Holy yeah. shit. He, he um, went a little off 
off the rails. I, I've never like listened to his show at all. I've listened to a few Same. podcasts where he's on it. Just Joe Rogan's but podcast. But it's, it's hilarious. So and I, like, I kind of feel bad for him, too, because he's like, I think he truly does believe a lot of this stuff. I don't, I don't know any way to verify whether he does, but it's definitely taking a toll on his health. Like he seems like he needs to <laughs> slow down a little bit. He's, just, he's riding that roller coaster a little too high. And the stories are just going funny. back into UFOs, though, to circle it back. Um, the fact that it's a flying saucer, that there's these beings that are in the heavens, right? You look at um, biblical accounts of that. I mean, look at biblically accurate angels. What are they? They're these flying discs that are on fire in the air, right? Huh. They can be interpreted as these vessels, and humanity has been seeing them for thousands of years. Like what Ezekiel describes in the Book of Enoch? Yes. Just these crazy looking, just, just beings. And you look at, um, you know, the um, uh, Native Americans, the sky people, right? They guard, they guard some of these 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 places are considered divine because these beings of, of these bird people came down and they, they gave them knowledge, hmm. right? And they're guarding these gates until they come back. Damn. And you look all across the world, like I think it was the Mayans or the Aztecs. It looks like there's an astronaut like landing with like a suit and he's got like a, a <laughs> this apparatus. And this is ancient alien stuff. Yeah, but you, <laughs> you look no, he's at right, it. Though. He's right. He's you right. look at it and you're like, why are all these people experiencing these visitations uh, or mm-hmm. depicting this across the world when they didn't, they weren't even talking to each other at this point in time. Shit, I don't know. Where it would I did be. an episode at the international UFO museum in Roswell and the lady I was interviewing, she obviously believed 100% of it. it. It wasn't a matter of whether it was real or not. It was like, no, we have documentation. We yeah. have like all of it. We have this giant library. People come from all over the world to use our library. It is fact. And I'm just like, so how do I use this information? Like, yeah. do I change anything in my life or do I just keep going on? I have one man trip? for you to, to look into, Dr. Stephen Greer. Dr. Stephen Greer? Listen Someone to Dr. Stephen down. Greer. All right. Yeah, and if uh, if you want to have someone on a podcast, I don't know how much he charges to be on a podcast because he probably does, but uh, that's a guy that will tell you some shit that'll make you question your life. Okay. Um, he's ran the uh, the disclosure project for the Pentagon um, for a long, long, long time. Um, yeah, he has a uh, documentary called Un- Unacknowledged, and he also has a documentary called uh, The Lost Century and How to Reclaim It that you can watch on Amazon Prime. What not a plug, not a promotion. Just I've watched it and it's really good. It says CIA.gov vanished. What is that? Oh, he's 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 alive. They can't kill him because if they if he dies, this is a public service announcement for everybody. If Dr. Stephen Greer dies of mysterious <laughs> death, we're in trouble. Public service announcement. Okay. Yeah, like it, like man is not suicidal, has no intentions of, of, of dying. Okay. Go the way of Epstein. I'll say it for him, yeah. If he dies, we're screwed. Well, guys. It's been a pleasure, man. I cannot thank you enough for coming on. It's sure, thanks for having me. Are you going ghost hunting with us? we got to shake yes, on it. I did, I'm, it's yes, it's done. It's on camera right now. <laughs> I am down. I uh, I, I love it. I, I love experiencing creepy, crazy shit. I'm going to open up my mind. I'm going to not be a, uh, what do I call it, cock block. Uh, yeah. Spiritual cock block. <laughs> I like that. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> there we go. But th- I, I appreciate it, guys. I I truly believe that um, although there's going to be people that believe different things than we do our whole entire lives, mm-hmm. we're just missing out if we're not opening ourselves up to at least seeing those people for like give them the straw man approach like see it from their perspective and there's normally all in my experience almost always something to be learned from it and agreed although you know y'all believe in a good and evil i really truly just think there's a balance that the things that we're mm-hmm. scared of is because we truly don't understand them mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're a luciferian and you're worshiping lucifer you know i would agree with you actually <laughs> <laughs> but good take. i appreciate it guys and we'll talk soon thanks buddy I am am Woodstock. Woodstock.